Van Horn. He is fifth place kicker. He is a freshman out of the state of Washington. This series goes all the way back to 1893. This is the 86th minute meeting. There is no better rivalry in the country. Jeff Van Horn set to start meeting number 86 between Pitt and Penn State. Van Horn's kick comes to Thomas, who backs up to his four. Makes a spin move at the 20 and gets out near the 24-yard line. Matt Bradley coming down on the special teams to make the tackle for Pitt. John Schaefer, the senior quarterback, starts. D.J. Dozier, Tim Manila in the backfield. The wide receivers, Eric Hamilton, Ray Roundtree, and the tight end is Brian Cyberling across the front. Stan Clayton, Steve Wisniewski, Keith Radisick, Dan Morgan, and Chris Conlon, who's coming off a knee injury, who was able to practice this week and is ready to go. First possession of the ball game, Penn State, just outside their 24-yard line. Gable wants to throw on first down, throws deep along the sideline, and it is overthrown. Looking on the far side for Eric Hamilton, Quinton Jones on the coverage. The pass incomplete. That brings up second down and 10. The pit defense, Tony Woods, the great All-American and a sure fire first round NFL draft pick at one defensive end. Walter Johnson, Tony Syracuse inside. Burt Grossman, the cousin of former Steeler tight end Randy Grossman. The other defensive end, Afke, Jerry Olsavsky, Daryl Woods, Tony Woods' younger brother, and Quinton Jones, Carol Austin, Billy Owens, and Gary Richard in the secondary. Safer to throw again. Sets up a screen. Out to Dozier. Needs a block. To the 30 and 31 yard line. Dozier will pick up seven. It'll bring up third down and three. Dozier is Penn State's leading receiver. That is his 25th catch of the year. And Steve Apke makes the tackle for the Pitt Panthers. Uh, Joe Paterno anticipating Pitt playing strong against their running game. Come out through. He got man-to-man -man coverage in the first play. Checked off. Schaefer checked it off. Here to come back with a screen. Good call. Goes, he gets a block, turns it up to the inside, just short of the first down. Third down and three. Penn State at zone 31. Schaefer will throw for the third time, past the sideline, and it was incomplete. He was looking for his wide receiver, Ray Roundtree, and Gary Richard, a junior college transfer from Denver, Colorado, and perhaps the best one-on-one -on -one cover man in the pit secondary breaks it up. So Schaefer throws three passes, completes one. Penn State will be forced to punt. That brings on John Bruno, averaging 40.7 yards per kick. Terrell Austin back deep for Pitt. Austin coming off an injury, averaging just a bit better than three yards per punt. Return. Whatever win there is is against Bruno. However, it's not very strong. It's a low kick. Austin will let it hit and pick it up at the 31. And he hit hard at the 35-yard line. So only a four-yard return. Quintus McDonald coming downfield to make the first hit. Kurt Bernier finishes up. It's a 38-yard punt, a four-yard return. And let's meet the Pitt Panther offense. Joe Felitsky, the junior from Central Catholic in Pittsburgh, is the quarterback. Charles Gladman and Craig Hayward in the same backfield. Billy Osborne, Michael Stewart, the wideouts. Tom Hubner starts at tight end. Tom Ricketts, Bob Sign, Chip Bakoskis, Mark Stepnowski, and Randy Dixon, the All-American, at right tackle. Single back set with Hayward. Slot left, wing right. Felitsky to throw on first down. Fires in the flat, and the pass is caught for a short game. The pass complete to Hosea Hurd. Duffy Cobbs knocked him out of bounds. But the pass completion is good for about five yards up to the 40-yard line. And pitch out as a kind of a spread, one-back formation, and uh, Felitsky went to the pass on first down. Penn State's defense, White, Russo, and Johnson across the front. The linebackers, Conlon, Bauer, Giftopoulos inside. Johnny Graham from Pittsburgh, the other outside linebacker, and there's the secondary. Second down and five. Again, the single back set. This is Hayward. And he meets a stone wall across the 40 to 41 yard line. Craig Ironhead Hayward. Averaging 4.6 per carry. Gets only a yard there to bring up third and four. Tim Johnson and Shane Conlon make the tackle with help from Pete Giftopoulos. They try to run uh, uh, Hayward behind Dixon, their big tackle. And that's the way to stop a 260-pound back to get him deep in the backfield before he gets started. Once he gets started, he uh, can really be a load. As a matter of fact, in practice this week, Penn State took Irv Bellamy, a nose tackle, 5'11", 260 pounds, and he simulated Craig Hayward because they're about the same size. But one's a nose tackle, and the other is a running back. Third down and four. 
Hayward driving to the 44, but he'll be shy of the first down. Mike Russo, the nose tackle, speaking of nose tackle, makes the stop for Penn State. He's a senior out of Mahopic, New York at 6'2", 260 pounds. He and Hayward weigh exactly the same. But Craig picks up three. It'll be fourth down and one, and that'll bring on the pit punter, John Rast, averaging 39.4 yards per punt. Back deep for Penn State. Jim Coates on the near side. Ray Ison on the far side. Coates takes at the 15. Finds a seam to the 30. Across the 35 and out to the 39-yard line. Well, a good return by Jim Coates. The tackle made by Chris Ross on the special unit. It's a 41-yard punt, but a 24-yard return for Penn State. 12-31 to play in the first quarter. The score, Pitt nothing and Penn State nothing. We'll be back right after this. Out here, a thunderstorm rolls in fast. Sometimes too fast. And when they're taken care of, it's your turn. Push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountains. If there's one thing I've tried to teach my linebackers over the years, it's don't get faked out. Hold your ground, keep your head up, use your eyes. Then pursue. Same goes for businesses. If you want to reach customers when they're ready to buy, the genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages is the book you want. If you want your ad to hit with maximum impact, don't be fooled. Advertise in the genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. They wrote the book. Jim Coates with a 17-yard punt return. That's better than double his average, George. That's a, he got a good block from Ray Isom, as you'll see, to the left of the screen, allowing him to cut up inside and make that nice return and puts uh, Penn State in decent field position. Penn State will start out at their own 39-yard line. Both teams with a possession. Both teams run three downs and out. Penn State throwing on all its three downs. Pitt with a pass and two runs. High formation. Manoa and Dozier in the tandem. Dozier, nothing. Maybe a half a yard. That pit defense giving up just 84 yards per game on the ground. That's sixth in the country. Matt Bradley, first man in. He's a junior from Centerville, Ohio. So Dozier, no game. It'll be second down and 10. Well, I think the purpose of Penn State coming, coming out throwing is just to let Pitt know that we, they will throw the ball if they have to. But they want to run it. That's their game. Penn State averaging 246 yards on the ground per game. That's in the top 15 in the field. Schaefer on second and 10. Fires to the sideline. Dozier with the reception out at the 45-yard line for a short gain of six yards. It'll bring up third down and four. Quinton Jones, the corner, makes the stop. He is a junior from Pompano Beach, Florida. Dozier has caught 26 passes this year, two of them for touchdowns, averaging 11 yards per reception. Schaefer, by the way, has hit on 58% of his passes, nine touchdowns, but he's been judicious with his passing. He's only thrown four interceptions in 185 attempts. Penn State 0 for 1 on third down. In the flat, the pass is caught for a first down. And a big fullback, Tim Manoa, out of bounds, in pit territory at the 45-yard line. Billy Owens makes the tackle. The pass complete to David Clark, a senior from Deptford, New Jersey. Not Manoa, who's in there at fullback. Now, this is, again, just a quick pass. It's the fullback coming out, David Clark, right into the flat. Nice reception, and Clark takes it for the first down. Ten-yard gain and a first down. Clark is in at fullback because Steve Smith, who injured an ankle last week against Notre Dame, probably will not play. Mano on the draw. Good block from Dozier, but a great defensive play, stopping it for a gain of a couple yards, was Tony Syracuse, a sophomore from Kenilworth, New Jersey. Manoa got the block from Dozier, but Syracuse was there to close down the hole. You know, Pitt plays that 4-3 defense, but what they do, they'll slide those two inside people and give you a nod look, either to the wide side of the field or the strength of the formation, and that's what happened with Syracuse at that time. He slid over to a nose guard position, come off the block, and made the tackle on a draw play. Penalty flag against Pitt. That'll wipe out the play. Here's the call from William McDonald. 
The offside call against Pitt. Walter Johnson was the guilty, guilty party. He was offside on the play, so it is first and five, just outside the Pitt 39 yard line. Just underway, no score, 11 and a half to play, first quarter. First down and five. Manoa. Tough yard, down to the 36 yard line. Manoa, a big fullback from Pittsburgh, North Allegheny. Jerry Wall made the tackle. The gain is three. It'll be second down and two. Nice story about Tim Manoa. He is from Tonga. His parents now live in Hawaii. They have never seen him play a football game. But they are not wealthy people. And the Penn State players chipped in out of their own pockets and raised enough money to fly Tim Manoa's parents here to University Park for the game today. They are in the stadium to watch their son play. Manoa banging inside the 35 and down to the 33. That's a Penn State first down at the on the tackle. That's uh, a very nice story that the players raised all that money enough to allow Tim Manoa's parents to be well, here. Stan, for you know you got a team when the kids do that. That time, as they went, ran a cross buck, they gave it to the first man through that was Manoa for the first down, and it showed cross buck action. Penn State's second first down. They have it at the pit 33. Double tight end for Penn State. It's Paul Pomper. He lines up on a wing left. Cutting inside the 30 and down to the 27 yard line. DJ Dozier picking up six. It'll be second down and four. Syracuse on the first hit. Daryl Wood, the outside linebacker, a sophomore, came in to help out on the tackle. Uh, you see DJ from an eye formation now. He'll cut up inside of Grossman, number 92. That's Clayton, number 74, starting for Conlon, gets up in front, leads up in front of him. Those are with the gain of six, and the second down and four. Those are again. Good penetration in the backfield by Lorenzo Freeman. Freeman broke free at the line of scrimmage, got the penetration to stop Dozier for no gain. Lorenzo Freeman, a senior from Camden, New Jersey. As I said before, uh, Stan, Pitt is sliding that defense, sliding the down people, slide the linebackers. Freeman makes penetration, took an inside move, stops Dozier. Third down for Penn State, one out of two on third down conversion. Penn State stays with a double tight end formation. Okay, for rolling. Fires on the run, and he was almost intercepted. Steve Apke almost came down with the interception. They were looking for the tight end. Apke almost picked it off. Almost an interception. That's Paul Pomford, number 88, was the intended receiver. They put Pomford in a slot type of formation. He tried to curl it in, but Apke was right there. Apke had a better chance to catch the football than Pomford did. That'll bring on Massimo Manka to attempt a 45-yard field goal. He is 12 out of 21 on field goal attempts this year. Kick is up. It is long enough. And the kick is good. Massimo Maika, a 45-yard field goal, perhaps officially credited as a 44-yard field goal. Penn State takes the lead. Nine minutes to play in the first quarter. The score, Penn State three, pit nothing. We'll be back right after this. The celebration. There is a higher intelligence coming to share a wealth of knowledge and powers. Follow your instincts and welcome them. They are known as Minolta Zoom Copiers. They transform complex functions into child's play and have remarkable endurance. Bring higher intelligence to your office with Minolta Zoom Copiers. Only from the mind of Minolta. Our third offering is the Century of Excellence Commemorative Book. Inside, you'll find articles written by the nation's top sports writers on the early years at Penn State, the Penn State All-Americans, Coach Joe Paterno, and the Penn State winning tradition. To order these official limited edition keepsakes, call 1-800-531-5314. That's 1-800-531-5314. Visa and MasterCard accepted. 
We want to remind you that the broadcast cable cast rights of this game are granted by Penn State University to TCS. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without written consent is prohibited. The announcers on this telecast have been hired and paid for by TCS. Massimo Manka with the first score of the game, a 45-yard field goal. Well, a 44-yard field goal. Well, 44 and a half. You're going to call me a liar for 36 inches. It's a 44-yard drive, eight plays, eating up about three and a half minutes. And the punt return set that up. They got a couple of first downs, put them together, and they were able to get three points on it. Manka will kick to Keith Tinsley. Number 20. Tinsley started the year. His entire career, actually, was as a defensive back, but because of injuries to the pit wide receivers, Tinsley moved to a wide out and has had a good season. 18 catches this year for four touchdowns. He's averaging 21.1 per kickoff return. It's a short kick, and they're going to let it roll. Someone's got to pick it up, and they'll take the touchback. Miscommunication between the pit deep men, the two up men, and Tinsley, and someone let it go. Alphonse and Gaston are lucky, however, to get the touchback, and the Panthers will start out at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. Once in a while, those backs forget that's a free ball, and uh, they were fortunate they got on it and come out to the 20. Joe Felitsky, junior quarterback from Pittsburgh, completing 56.5% of his passes coming in. He only threw the football 46 times this year. One touchdown, two interceptions. Hit again, goes to a spread. Felitsky will throw on first down over the middle and it is caught the pass complete to Michael Stewart for a short gain out to the 23 yard line Shane Conlon the All-American linebacker makes the tackle on Stewart who just caught his 27th pass of the year well Stan I, a coach Godfrey had allowed people to believe that with uh, Haywood and Gladman in the back he was going to do a lot more running but it's, here you see Stewart getting hit for a short game but actually they're using Gladman as a receiver now he's setting up in a slot or as a wide out. This is something they have done before using Charles Gladman as a receiver. Now they go to the pro set. It's a gain of four, second and six. Gladman make that Hayward to the 25 yard line, a gain of perhaps a yard, maybe a bit more. Trey Bauer, inside linebacker, made the stop on Ironhead Hayward. We'll call it a gain of one and make it third down and five. Well, that's a tough place to run. You, you have Russo in there, Bakakis, the center for Pitt, trying to block Russo, but you got two tough inside linebackers in Bauer and Giftopoulos in there. Hayward is Pitt's leading rusher, 729 yards coming into the ballgame. Now Joe Felitsky facing a third down and five, and again, it is the Pitt offense in a spread. It's a blitz. Mike Russo's after Felitsky. Flag down. The pass is thrown incomplete. There was a flag down. Mike Russo led the charge on Joe Felitsky, who did well to get rid of it. We are going to have a flag on the play. It's a hold against Pitt. That'll be declined, and the Panthers will be forced to punt. Well, Russo made the first penetration, but Shane Conlon coming from the outside. Watch it. Watch this kind of pressure. I uh, see Johnson there, 55. Now, that's Russo coming in. Felitsky's trying. He's flushed out of the pocket. Just tried to get rid of the ball, but there was a holding call. Mark Stepnowski, the sophomore from Erie, is called for the hold. Stepnowski is a terrific offensive lineman. Don Nealon, the head coach of West Virginia, said that Stepnowski is one of the best offensive linemen he'd ever seen. That indeed is high praise. Coates and Isom back deep. They stand to their own 40-yard line. Rasp, the 41-yarder, his first attempt. It's off a high kick. Isom will take it to 38. Got room to run to midfield. And that's as far as he will get. But a 12-yard return for Ray Isom and a 37-yard punt. First man downfield is Reggie Smith to make the tackle for the Panthers. 7.27 to play in the first quarter. Penn State leads Pitt 3 to nothing, And we'll be back right after this. There is a higher intelligence coming to share a wealth of knowledge and powers. Follow your instincts and welcome them. They are known as Minolta Zoom Copiers. They transform complex functions into child's play and have remarkable endurance. Bring higher intelligence to your office with Minolta Zoom Copiers. Only from the mind of Minolta. 
Waiting for special new savings on Pontiac? The wait is over. Now at your Pontiac Pace Center, save up to $72 a month with direct-to-you GMAC leasing. Choose from selected new 87 Pontiacs in stock, all with air conditioning, stereo, and more. Pontiac 6000 or Firebird, now just $199 a month. Grand Am, now just $189 a month. Sunbird or Fiero, now just $169 a month. A limited time offer with total savings up to $3,400. So don't wait. See your Pontiac Pace Centers now. Penn State leads it three to nothing in the first quarter, 727. John Congemi is in uniform today. Got the crack vertebrae. Wanted to dress for today's game, but he will not play. DJ Dozier. The running room is hard to find against this pit defense. They're awfully good against the run. Dozier picks up a couple in the pit territory. Lorenzo Freeman made the first hit on the plate. Jerry Wall, junior from Ingemar, a linebacker, helped out. Wanted to talk more about John Kinjemi. He had a great career at Pitt, a real competitor, a real leader on his football team. He can throw, and he can throw well, but with that cracked vertebrae, the doctors are not willing to take a chance with a hit, which could, of course, compound the injury. Second and eight. Play action. Looking yeah. deep. Wide open is Hamilton, and he can't catch up to it. Eric Hamilton was wide open for a touchdown. Schaefer too tall with the throw. Well, that, they ran Hamilton on that post pad, and Pitt has been playing very tight in the secondary. Not a man. Uh, now, Schaefer steps up in the pocket nicely. He just overshot him by a couple of feet. Hamilton's wide open, and Rouse at six. A little loft on the pass would probably have gotten the job done. Pitt, with his excellent corners in Richard and Jones, will play a very tight on the corner. Third down and eight. Penn State one out of three on third down conversions. Here's a fade pattern along the sideline looking for Roundtree, but it is overthrown. Schaefer's completion percentage drops to three out of eight, and John Bruno will be called on to punt. The Panthers secondary, George, a lot like the L.A. Raiders. They have a lot of belief and a lot of faith in their corners, and they're going to play eyeball to eyeball. Though. Well, if the way they got their defense rigged right now to stop that run and keep a lot of people around the line of scrimmage, it's going to put your, your cornerbacks you know, in some man-to-man -man coverage. Bruno trying to kick this one out of bounds. Senior from Upper St. Clair looking for the sideline. Hits it to five. Takes a Penn State bounce. And they're going to call it a touchback. Three Penn State players down there trying to bat it back into the field of play, but it is a touchback, a 49-yard punt. We've got 6.35 to play in the first quarter. The score, Penn State three, hit nothing. We'll be back right after this. For the holidays, we always go to Grandma's. They never leave. She's got this special way she prepares food. What's that special thing you do, Grandma? I cook it the holidays. This season, I'm eating out. Batter fried shrimp at Long John Silver's, plump golden brown, and I don't have to cook. Now that's a holiday treat. Gee, Grandma, you're not serious about not cooking, are you? Long John Silver's. Watch me. Sounds good to me. full line of Daly's cocktail mixes at your favorite store. The Pitt Panthers starting out at their own 20-yard line. This is their third possession of the football game. They are still looking for their initial first down. Pro set, Hayward and Gladman. This is Craig Hayward. Cracks the line of scrimmage and gets a couple out to the 22-yard line. Nose tackle, Mike Russo, makes the stop. If you're wondering about this Penn State defense, they have allowed only three points all year long in the first quarter. They have allowed only 19 points in the second quarter. Only 22 points this year in the first halves of their first 10 games. Only one of those was a touchdown, and that came on a blocked punt in the end zone. So the defense really has not allowed a touchdown in the first half of any game this year. Hayward with two. It is second and eight. Green Blitzke. Middle screen. He's got Gladman for first down up to the 35 and near the 37-yard line. 
Bauer and Giftopoulos made the tackle, but a beautifully conceived screen, middle screen to Charles Gladman for a first down. Well, actually, what happened, it might have been a fake of a middle screen and let Gladman come in from the outside because, you see, all right, now he fakes to Gladman on a delay. Now, Gladman gets in front of the screen, if it was a screen. It's a little delay, outlet pass. Makes a nice gain out of it. It's a 14-yard gain. And the initial first down of the game for the Pitt Panthers, lining up in an eye. Gladman hit at the line of scrimmage and stopped for no gain. Shane Conlon hit Gladman at the line of scrimmage to slow him up and spin him around, and Mike Russo came in to finish up the tackle. Gladman, no gain. You see why Shane Conlon's an All-American here. This is Gladman with Haywood leading up. Hasn't done much blocking. Conlon coming from his outside position puts him down for the loss. Charles Gladman, who has not played a great deal this year, averaging 3.9 per carry. Second down and 10. Gladman again got a little bit of a hole. And nice his way across the 40 and out to the 41. Good year run by Gladman. There wasn't a great deal there. Gladman is able to pick up about five yards to bring up third and five. Trey Bauer makes the tackle for Penn State. Well, you know, everybody knows he's a fine running back. He's had some good days against Penn State in the past, and that time made a nice cut. Read the center's block, try to break it back. Bill Felitsky is going to call a timeout. That is not in that quote you see. He had lived that one. 4.32 to play in the first quarter, and Joe Felitsky will call timeout. As Pitt faces a third down and five, they are 0 out of two on third down conversions thus far. George, we have seen Pitt thus far throwing relatively short, quick hitches, quick outs, passes over the middle. Is that to bring a defense in and then look for a deep pattern? Well, they figure, you know, the Penn State plays such tough defense themselves that the only thing they're giving them is the short stuff underneath. Right now, it's still like two fighters that are kind of feeling themselves out in the early rounds. Uh, Penn State has not run the ball as well as I think they will, will eventually as the game goes on. And uh, I think they'll mix it up a little bit more with play action. But Pitt, again, I said in the beginning of the top of the show, this game, whether Pitt can win it, keep it close or whatever, is relative to how well their defense plays. And right now, their defense is playing very well. Penn State with the only extended drive of the game. That was for 44 yards. And in case you joined us late, it ended in a field goal by Massimo Manka. Third down and five. Pitt will spread the offense. That's Gladman flank way out to the far side of the field. Let's do the time. Fires over the middle. The pass is caught. Stewart breaks tackles to the 50, and he's in Penn State territory near the 45-yard line. Duffy Cobbs finally brought him down, but Michael Stewart, a junior from Norwalk, Ohio, was stopped for the short of the first down, but on individual effort, managed to pick up the first down. Well, you see what happens here. Stewart makes the reception before he gets to the first down. It's just poor tackling. A couple of people have a shot at him. First it was Conlon, then Bauer. And Stewart's unable to get up to get to make, make that first down. Pitt's first venture into Penn State territory. Outside the 45-yard line. The counter to Gladman. Breaks through a hole to the 40. 35. He's down to the 33-yard line. And another Pitt first down. Marcus Henderson, the hero back, made the stop. The junior from Aliquippa. And Gladman picking up nice yardage on the counter. Excellent blocking up front. Uh, you see the tackle pulling here. This is a counter play. He gets a real great block, makes a good cut from the inside. That was the All-American offensive lineman, Dixon, who made that key block for Pitt. A tackle trap and a 13-yard gain and a first down for the Panthers at the Penn State 33. Straight drop over the middle, wide open. Hayward makes a move. 15, 10, 5, Hayward down to the three-yard line. Henderson and Downing made the tackle, but Ironhead Hayward, a 30-yard pass reception and run. Very well-conceived play. All right. Now, you see Hayward. He'll come out, of, out to right to left. They had him lined up real wide. Nobody's on him. Wide open. You cannot let a 260-pound back get that much steam upfield. Different angle from back here. Watch Felitsky. Hits him right on the numbers. Good throw, good catch. And he can roll when he gets going. Look at that, that move, move for a 260-pound back. First and goal, just inside the four-yard line. 
Hayward. He's hit, and he'll be dropped for a loss to five. There is a flag down. Conlon made the tackle on Craig Hayward, but there is a flag on the play. It would be second and goal from outside the five. The penalty appears to be against Penn State. Offside it is. So Pitt will accept the penalty. And that's a big, big, big penalty because a lot of difference between on that five-yard line and two-and-a-half-yard two line. Pitt would have been almost forced to throw on second and goal from outside the five now. They're going to have it first and goal at the two. Well, I've heard Penn State with delayed passes right and so far early in the game. Uh, something that Penn State probably has not seen and Pitt has not used all year long. Three minutes to play in the first quarter. You see the streak of not having allowed a touchdown in 16 regular season games. First and goal. It's a full house backfield. Hayward driving to the one yard line. Pitt going with a full house backfield with an offensive lineman to lead the blocking at the point of attack. Hayward with a one yard game will be second and goal from the one. They put it back in motion to lead up in there right there where the lineman is. Number six, you see him leading up there trying to get a little bit more penetration to give the big fullback some a big increase. That is Dean Caliguire, number 64, an offensive guard, a freshman from Montour. Nate Hayward, number 35, Ironhead's younger brother, is also in the backfield. Hayward dives in for the Panther touchdown. Craig Hayward goes over from the one. And for the first time this year, Penn State has given up a first quarter touchdown, and the Panthers have the lead at 6-3. to three. Exact same play. Calendar is lined up in the backfield, the left half back. They put him in motion as that big extra blocker. And you got a, like a 260-pounder leading a 260-pounder, and Hayward goes up and over for the, for, the, for the touchdown. Two big plays on this drive. A third down pass to Michael Stewart, who got a first down on his own. And then a 30-yard pass from Felitsky to Hayward. Van Horn, 27 out of 27 on extra points this year. He remains perfect. The Pitt Panthers with a beautifully conceived and executed 80-yard touchdown drive, and Pitt has a 7-3 lead with 2-12 to play in the first quarter. Well, they say, George, that an underdog, and Pitt was a two-touchdown underdog coming into this game, you allow an underdog to play with you or equal to you or better than you, and, of course, they begin to believe that they become the superior team. Well, they're an underdog with a lot of talent, though, but, uh, you know, uh, they had a good scheme. That particular play, the key play was the delayed pass to Haywood over the middle because he was wide open. Uh, that set up the touchdown, and uh, Penn State has to make some adjustments to some of these delayed passes that could hurt them. But again, the poor tackling on Stewart, which would have prevented the first down, of course, hit into a punching situation also. Not only the 30-yard pass from Joe Felitsky to Craig Hayward, but remember earlier, there was the same kind of circle pattern to Charles Gladwin, which picked up first down yardage. Felitsky, by the way, five out of six for 65 yards. Schaefer, on the other hand, is three out of eight. Mike Godfrey, in his first year, and experiencing his first Pitt Penn State game. Back deep for Penn State, Jim Coates, on the far side and Blair Thomas on the near side awaiting the kick of Jeff Van Horn. Short kick, Thomas at his nine. Makes a move. Another one, 25, 30. Look out, the front Blair right. Thomas to the 40. Thomas, he's gone for a Penn State touchdown. Blair Thomas, a 91-yard kickoff return. And just like that, Penn State regains the lead. Well, that's what blazing speed can do to you. The Notre Dame almost did it to Penn State last year, but uh, last week, but it was a clip. Uh, Penn State fortunately did not clip. And you'll see some great moves here. He gets a great initial block. Now, for a man to make a return like this, Coach gives him a great, like it's a great block from the side. Turns up, puts a move to the inside, another move, cuts to the inside again. Now watch him turn on his feet. This is something a coach cannot teach a kid. It's just blind speed. We have two Penn Staters trying to pick him up. Pomfret took out the kicker, Jeff Van Horn, and he was gone. 91-yard kickoff return. The extra point by Manka is good, and Penn State regains the lead quickly at 10-7. George, there was a great block at the point of attack 
Just see Costa Ball. See if we can find Let's it. Let's see if we can find it. I was trying to pick it up myself. Somebody came to the outside. Scott, Scott Gobb, number 63, the sophomore from Bethel Park, PA, threw the key block on the play. Anytime you have a kickoff return or a punt return that goes all the way for a long distance, somebody makes a key block right around where the ball carrier receives the ball. And uh, this is what happened. God made a key block and allowed Blair Thomas to do all those wonderful things he just did. The last time Penn State returned a kickoff for a touchdown was in 1980. Kurt Warner did it, 88 yards and a touchdown. Thomas, 91-yard kickoff return. Earlier this year, Thomas had a 92-yard run from scrimmage, and believe it or not, did not score. They marked him out at the one foot line. And Joe had been disappointed in how his specialty teams had played in the last couple of games. They hadn't played that well. Well, this guy is starting to make up for it. They're playing awfully well today. That is the first return for a touchdown by Penn State this year, either by punt or a kickoff. So Blair Thomas, the sophomore from Philadelphia, who's had a great year from scrimmage. He's averaging eight and a half yards per carry. He is Penn State's third leading rusher. Returns the kickoff for 91 and a touchdown, and Keith Tinsley hoping to do the same for the Panthers. And believe me, there's nothing more demoralizing to a football team to have that happen. They just went sky high. They made a nice drive pit, took it in for the touchdown, and suddenly, in a few seconds, the other team scored them. Tim with an 80-yard touchdown drive. 12 left, and just in about 15 seconds, Penn State regains the lead. Tinsley at the two. 15, 20, breaks through and gets out to the 25-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 24. So Keith Tinsley with a 22-yard return. There's Blair Thomas with a well-deserved break and some liquid refreshment. Sophomore from Philadelphia and Penn State's tail back in the future once D.J. Dozier graduates this year. Seems like we've been on the air for about three and a half days, but there's still a minute 51 to play in the first quarter. It's been a good football game thus far. Perfect day for football, 45 degrees, no wind to speak of, sunshine. This may be the last sunshine we see in this part of the country until April. Hayward and Gladman in and on. This is Charles Gladman, breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and fights his way out near the 27-yard line. Matt Johnson, senior from York, PA, made the first hit on the play. Shane Conlon also in there. Gladman picking up three. Call it second down and seven. Glad them thus far, 21 yards on four carries. You know, that tandem of offensive linemen of 77, Stepnowski and 69, Dixon, they're two fine offensive linemen. You get a big fullback like Haywood running behind them, they're tough. Second down and seven. The state secondary rotates. Play fake. Olitsky over the middle and is almost intercepted. Pete Giftopoulos, who has two interceptions this year from inside linebacker spot, got his hand on the ball. He's 6'3", and he'd been 6'5", he might have had a shot. But Polinski overshot the target, the pass incomplete. That'll bring up third well, and seven. What you see them, they pick up Gladman this time coming out of the backfield. They swung Haywood uh, one way. Now Gladman will come up to the other side here. They're trying to get him on a secondary type of a delay play, but that time Penn State had a cut. It looked like Polinski was looking for Gladman again. Joe brings the Panthers out on a third down and seven in a split backfield set. A delayed draw. Gladman, he's got running room. Gladman has hit hard, but he's got the first down across the 35 and out to the 38-yard line. Good play call by Mike Godfrey and his staff. They cross Penn State up. We've got flags and some late hitting going on along the sideline. Ray Ison made the tackle. If there is a penalty assessed, it will be a dead ball foul which would mean that Pitt would have the first down, most likely, but face a first and 25. Well, it's, it's, it's Isom and Gladman were both going at it. Uh, from my angle, it looked like both, both kids should get penalized and they should offset, but we'll see what they call here. Pitt does have the first down at its own 38 after the game by Gladman. It is a dead ball foul. Offsetting penalty. Okay, now this is a good uh, call, the draw play, but Gladman shows what kind of a back he is. That stuffy Cobbs has got contained, just, and they, then Isom filled a little too late and, and couldn't prevent him from making the first down. But Gladman is a really good fine uh, uh, back. Right now the scuffle. 
And a little eyeball to eyeball. Face guard to face guard. Push. This is a pushing game. No, no, but, you know, it really wasn't that serious. All right, the best way to call it. Nobody gets penalized on the play. First and ten at the 38. Hayward up inside, pounding his way across the 40 and out through the 43 yard line. Ironhead Hayward with a five yard gain. It'll be second down and five. Trey Bauer made the tackle on the play. Hayward now 14 yards on seven carries. 30 seconds to play in the first quarter. Penn State leading 10 to 7. Pitt with an 80 yard touchdown drive. Blair Thomas, a 91 yard kickoff return. Made the difference. A massive amount of field goal. Second down and five. over the middle and he is caught and then dropped. Billy Osborne, the intended receiver, he is Pitt's leading receiver with 31 catches. Can't hang on to that one. And he'll bring up a third down and five with eight seconds to play in the quarter. That would have been a tough catch, uh, Stan. A little crossing pattern there and uh, the ball was out of, away from Osborne. He would have had to make a great adjustment. Of Joe Felitsky now five out of eight on the afternoon. Good for 65 yards. He faces a third down and five. Pitt is two out of four on third down conversion. firing and it is incomplete the pass thrown on a slant pattern to Hosea heard Marcus Henderson over there on coverage but the pass was low and that'll force the Panthers to punt John Rask coming on three seconds to play in the first quarter that was a big play because it stopped it took away some uh, pit momentum uh, they went to a curl pattern in the first down Penn State was in the right defense well the return game for Penn State has been responsible for both scores a 17-yard punt return by Coates set up the field goal and of course Thomas' kickoff return. At Penn State it's only touchdown. Coates and Ice from the back deep standing inside the club. Rask, a high floating kick. Coates takes it to 23. Up the middle, the 30. And tripped up from behind across the 35 and out to the 36-yard line. So another good return by Jim Coates, and we have reached the end of the first quarter. The score, Penn State 10, the Pitt Panthers 7, and we'll be back right after this. We were working Bella, Pennsylvania Yellow Pages when... But I just bought a Yellow Pages ad. This the book? No. With this Bella, Pennsylvania name on it? That's not it. Then it wasn't the genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. The one 99% of the public knows on site. The one they turn to when they're ready to buy. The only Yellow Pages you need. You see, friend, somebody got you to advertise in a strange directory. Well, what do you know? Sir, I guess somebody took me for a ride. Don't be fooled. Advertise in the genuine Yellow Pages from Bell of Pennsylvania. We wrote the book. 100 years of Penn State football. In honor of the century of excellence, we're proud to offer this limited edition three-volume videotape collection. Volumes 1 and 2 include highlights from the Century of Excellence Galas. You'll see former Penn State greats and experience the excitement. Volume 3 is the 1986 season in review. The set is destined to become a collector's item. To order, call 1-800-531-5314. That's 1-800-531-5314. Available in VHS or Beta. Visa and MasterCard accepted. He's going to love it. As long as we're not late for the meeting. This is going to with us right there. Hey, this, we got a Red Hot Express. We got a Red Hot Express. We got a Red Hot Crew. We got a Red Hot Crew. We got Super Value Race. We try harder, too. Hey, this, we're Red Hot for you. I love it. But what's it going to cost? Don't worry. We'll give you a Super Value Race. Hey, this, hey, this. Are you kidding? There's no way. No way this is a light beer. But, I mean, I believe you. If you say it is, I, I've never tasted light beer that tastes like this. Tom Warren couldn't believe any light beer could taste as good as Genesee Light. I'm shocked. I mean, it really is a light beer. Um, I've always thought that light beers were just uh, regular beer that was kind of watered down. But uh, this is, I mean, this has got to taste all its own. It's really, really good beer. This proves you don't have to give up taste to have a light beer. Jimmy Light, that's, that's delicious. Set to begin the second quarter of play. Penn State with a 10 to 7 lead over the Pitt Panthers. After a 13 yard punt return by Jim Coates, Penn State starts out at their own 26. Make it 36. Schaefer looking deep along the sideline for Roundtree. The pass is overthrown. 
Excellent coverage by Quentin Jones on the play. Jones, junior from Pompano Beach, Florida. Four interceptions this year. There might be a flag on it. Jones might have used his right hand to keep Roundtree from closing in on the ball. Well, it's against Penn State. It'll be offensive interference of anything. Yep. So it was Roundtree caught pushing off on the play. Well, they were running stride for stride, and Jones had terrific position, inside position on Roundtree, and Roundtree must have pushed off on him to try to get to the outside. George, I'm going to assume, and I'll ask your opinion, with the tight coverage that Pitt gives on the corners, I assume that's why they're trying to go deep. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Pitt has got so many people around the line of scrimmage. As you said, it's kind of like the rated defense. They're playing Penn State's wideouts one-on-one, -on -one, and they, I guess they feel that their defensive backs have that kind of speed to stay with them, and they've had so far. Look at the disparity in total yardage in the first quarter. Pitt playing very well. D.J. Dozier on a delay across the 25 to the 30, and Dozier out to the 31-yard line on a first and 25. Steve Apke, the senior from Cincinnati, who was a high school teammate of Penn State quarterback John Schaefer at Moeller High School in Cincinnati under Jerry Faust. Well, the pitch defense has Penn State at its sink right now. You know, they want to run the football. He gets a good block from Manoa here and gets some of it back, but not enough for the first down. Penn State has to start, a, start establishing its running game. Second down and 15 after a 10-yard gain by Joker. Schaefer, the straight drop, looking over the middle, and the pass is too tall. Looking on the slant pad for Ray Roundtree was almost intercepted by Terrell Austin. Well, Schaefer not having a good day thus far. He is three out of nine. He's only 22 yards. But again, good coverage by Pitt's defense. Uh, he, Austin was right there with Roundtree. They brought him that time across the field. Uh, the ball was a little high, but Austin was there. Fourth down. Loss of down comes on the offensive pass interference. And Bruno will punt. It's off a of beauty. At the 25, yeah. 35, gets to the sideline. Finally brought down by Brian Chismar, the freshman from Swissville, Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh. That's a 44 yard punt, but a very good return by Austin. 14 yards, he was averaging just a little better than three. So, with the good punt return, Pitt will start out in good shape near their own 39 yard line. That time, Chisma broke through the wall. It looked like there was a wall forming, and Austin was going to be able to get around it and make a nice return on it. When we talk about offense, we try to analyze defense, and you often forget the kicking teams they may have played a major factor in today's game thus far. Charles Gladman gets outside. The 45 makes a move. He's finally brought down by Ray Isom. At the 47-yard line, so a good move by Gladman to get outside off his tackle and pick up good yardage for the Panthers of eight yards. That's just excellent running. You watch Gladman; eh? he's going to he's supposed to go inside. Nothing there. Little, little fake breaks it to the outside, turns on the speed, and makes it. It turns it into a nice game. Ray Eisen makes the tackle. He's got an injury on the play. Penn State nose tackle Mike Russo is down, and he is being looked at. And we're going to take a timeout while they work on the senior nose guard. 13.46 to play in the first half. Penn State 10, the Pitt Panthers 7. We'll be back right after this. When you're deciding where to go for a burger, look at it this way. On one side, you've got the McDLT. On the other side, you've got the Whopper. So it's just a matter of choosing between frying at McDonald's and flame broiling at Burger King. Between a burger they'd rather serve their way and a burger fixed your way. So when it comes down to this, it's as easy as this. This is a Burger King town. We know how burgers should be. Mixes at your favorite store. 
Coming up at the end of the game, we'll select the Pennsylvania Gridiron Classic West Player of the Game. A $1,000 academic scholarship will be awarded in the name of the Pitt or Penn State Pennsylvania Gridiron Classic West Player of the Game. This award is sponsored by the Pennsylvania Dairy Promotion Program, reminding you to make it milk. How about an ice cold glass right now? Maybe you guys see to that. Get us some ice cold milk up here. Russo taken out of the ball game. Matt Johnson, his backup, number 51 in his nose. Second down and two. Hit at its own 47. Gladman in motion to the near side. Hayward hit hard at the line of scrimmage, but look at the power on Ironhead Hayward as he gets three yards on the left for a pencil. A fifth first down. If Dopolis and Kirkendall make the tackle for the Nittany Lions, but not before Hayward gets the first down. That's just raw power. You know, they had spread Penn State's defense way out and then just gave it to the fullback. Short yardage. He made it on his own for the first down. At midfield, 13-20 to play in the first half. Pit trails, 10-7. Slot left and an eye backfield. Gladman off tackle into Penn State territory, territory and a gain of three to the 47. Don Graham senior from Brentwood High School in Pittsburgh makes the tackle. Second down and seven. George, would you call that misdirection or is that just Gladman's option to cut whichever way he wants to go? Well, they just ran him back to the short side and uh, it was a, you know, he made a couple of good cuts out of it. He picks the hole where he wants to go and he, he's got to read the offensive blocking scheme. The offensive line for the Pitt Panthers doing a good job. That's number 72, Chris Getz, Bill Chirpak, Bob Sign alternating. Chip Pekowskis, Mark Stepanski, and Randy Dixon, plus the tight end Tom Lee. Penn State defense third in the country against the Warriors. Looking down at seven. Deep drop, pass in the middle. Hayward is hit, breaks away, and he has got a first down at the Penn State 39-yard line. Giftopoulos hanging on for dear life, giving up 30 pounds to Craig Hayward. But it's a game. Make the first down. Well, you know, this is no fluke throwing to Hayward. He came into the game with 23 receptions. He's a fine pass receiver. And what they're doing now, they're just delaying him. They're delaying, delay, one, two, three. Then he releases, gets a full head of steam up, and Giftopoulos is 240. That's 240 hit, 260. Should a linebacker be responsible for any back out of the backfield? Yes, that was. I'm sure if stop if top of us had him, he just was a little slow reaction. Hit seven first down to the ball game. They're at the Penn State 39. Hayward. Off left tackle. Diving ahead for a couple of the 37-yard line. Giftopoulos and Chip Johnson making the tackle. Keith Karpinski in the ball game, number 84 for Penn State. You know, and, and Hayward is not one of those big backs that gets tired because. Uh, against Miami, he broke the pit uh, uh, rushing record of the, the amount of carries in a football game. So, you know, he doesn't get tired. He's 260, but he can keep going. In the game for Pitt, he's been there for the last couple of plays. It's Chucky Williams wearing number 81. He's an offensive tackle, but they're lining him up as a tight end. Gladman split wide to the near side. Second and eight. Polinski deep over the middle, and it is overthrown. Incomplete Isom, actually, the closest man to the football, looking for Osborne down there. Ray Isom had the coverage on the play and a good rush by the two Penn State defensive ends, Bob White and Tim Johnson. That brings up third down and eight. Once again, when Penn State decides to go after Felitsky, he gets rid of the ball real quick and it seems to give him a lot of problems. And uh, maybe we'll see a little bit, a little bit more of that. Felitsky, six out of 11, 74 yards. Pitt facing the third and eight. They are two out of five on third down conversion. At the moment, the Panthers are out of field goal range. The first down will put them in. Hayward motion. We're going to have a legal yeah. procedure on Pitt. Politsky throwing deep, incomplete. The motion, you saw two Pitt players in motion at the same time. Well, that was the formation that they hit, they hit Hayward on a delay a few times. Actually, there's nobody in the back. It was just the quarterback, and they got the, the backs both out on the wings. And it got Penn State's defense. It's a spread formation. The illegal shift will go against Pitt. Penn State will decline and bring up fourth and eight and force Pitt to punt. That is John Rask. This is his average for the day. He is a freshman out of Norwin High School. His brother went to Stanford. Ray Isom is the lone safety. Rask will be looking for the sideline. A big rush by Penn State. Doesn't quite get there. Don Graham made the rush, and the punt is going to be a touchback. 
good effort by Pitt, almost getting down there. They're down at the two-yard line, but the touchback, and Penn State will take over at its own clock. 11.03 to play in the first half. The score remains. The Penn State Nittany Lions 10, the Pitt Panthers 7, and we'll be back right after this. See the all-new 87 Plymouth Sundance, the unbelievable American car. It's everything you thought came only in an import. And take a look at 87 Plymouth Reliant LE. At just 8762, it's America's best six-passenger car value. The born in America. Again. Your Delaware Valley Chrysler Plymouth dealers can put together a great deal for you. 91 Bravo proceeding on rescue training mission. One weekend a month, you can take off for the beach. The mountains. Motor a drive in the country. In the Army Reserve. Subject spotted. Be all that you can be. It's no picnic, but it's the kind of excitement no other weekend offers. Mission completed. We're heading home. And you'll still have three weekends a month to take off on your own. Find your future in the Army Reserve. The state will start out at their own 20-yard line. They have had only one drive, that of 44 yards for a field goal. Pitt has been the better of the two offensive units thus far, yet Penn State leads by a field goal. Tony Woods coming in from his left defensive end position, ran right into John Schaefer, who was rolling to that side. Woods, his 12th sack of the year, Pitt's 47th sack of the year, and what a good defensive call. They ran right into the formation. Well, they anticipated play action. Nobody touched Woods. And actually, Schaefer was defenseless, puts him down for a big loss. And Pitt is playing very, very aggressively on the line of scrimmage. Steve Wisniewski was the guard trying to get there, but Schaefer rolling to that side. And the guard, Wisniewski, a sophomore, could not get there. The loss is back to the 10. It is second down and 20. Manoa. No game. Well, the Pitt defense is all fired up now. Tony Siragusa made the first hit on the play on the... Big fullback from Pittsburgh, third down and 20. Well, the way Pitt's playing their defense, as I said, they're coming in, they have nothing to give, to, to lose and everything to gain here. They're doing a lot of gambling. I think the, for Penn State to hurt them, they're going to have to hit one of them deep bombs on them and that gets that man-to-man -man coverage. Penn State, total offense. Less than 50 yards. Schaefer rolling out again, looking deep to the sideline. The pass is going to be incomplete. Eric Hamilton was the receiver on the play. He would not have had a first down. Of course, it would have meant another 18 yards in field position. Now Penn State will be forced to punt out of their own end zone. So John Schaefer now is three out of ten. That sequence set up by Tony Woods, senior defensive end, All-American, first-round draft pick. He's out of Newark, New Jersey. They might go for the block here. Bruno is standing only a yard deep in the end zone, so only 11 yards separation. He gets it away. Good kick. Austin is 42, looking to make a break. Flag is down, and Austin has his legs cut out from under him at the 43-yard line. Coming down on the tackle. Brennan Gartner down there. It's a 48-yard punt, virtually no return. We'll see what happens on the penalty. Well, when, he, when Austin pulled up, there was a grab from behind, and it's a hold, and I guess Pitt. I think it was number 52, Matt Bradley, who will be caught on the hold. So the penalty will hurt Pitt's field position. There's the hold. Bruno comes out of there with a big punt when they needed it. One of the things absent from the game thus far, the turnover ratio... Penn State a plus 18 on the year. That's fourth in the country. Pitt is a minus one. The hold will move the football back inside the 35 to the 33. It will take over. First down and 10. Let's see if the Penn State's defense tightens up. They, they've seen some new stuff that Pitt put in for this particular game, and I'm sure they're going to make, have made some adjustments. And we are going to have a timeout. 9.33 to play in the first half. The score, Penn State 10, Pitt 7. Pitt 136 yards, Penn State only 36. Yet Penn State has the lead. Pitt takes over at their own 33. Kalitsky 
Throws back to Hayward. To the 40. Hayward. The 45. Makes a great move to the 50. Craig Hayward is in Penn State territory at the 46-yard line. A 21-yard gain. And Hayward got most of it on his own. Matt Johnson finally brought him down with help from Dwayne Downing. Stan, a very clever play. They flooded the wide side of the field and then rolled to the short side. And you'll see a delay screen right here to Gladman. Oh, that's Hayward. That's okay, Hayward. And, and that's a 260-pound back who can make cuts like that. And they released the right side of the line and able to get the ball, turn up field. The big block was by Mark Stepnowski on Mike Beckett. First and 10. Let's keep deep over the middle. is batted away at the last second. Exceptional defensive play by Marcus Henderson, the junior from Aliquippa, as the receiver was open, but Henderson batted it away at the last second. And speaking about the secondary, Penn State has been playing number four downing in there uh, in place of Eddie Johnson. Now, good play selection. They get a first down and come right back with the pass over the middle, and Marcus Henderson bats it away at the last minute. Can't play defense, pass defense anyway, any better than that. Kalitsky now with that incompletion. Hitting on 50%, 7 out of 14, 95 yards. Second down, 10, 9 minutes to play, first half. Let's get all the time in the world, firing deep man wide open and drop. The pass, looking for Keith Kinsley, the senior out of Detroit, he was wide open, and he dropped. Well, Kinsley had 18 uh, receptions coming into the game, and he's going to remember dropping that one. Uh, you know, if Penn State goes on to win this football game because he was wide open. They split the zone. Right here, you see Tinsley coming right to left. Nobody near him. Could have had it. There's no pressure from a defensive back. Somewhat in defense. Tinsley lost his footing at the last second. He had obviously the ball that he should have caught. Third down and 10. Pick two out of six on third down and conversion from the Penn State 46 yard line. Ricky. He is going to be sacked by Tim Johnson. No fumble on the play. He is down at the 43-yard line. Tim Johnson, the senior defensive end out of Sarasota, Florida, his fifth sack of the year, and Pitt will be forced to punt. And Penn State only rushed four men. Johnson took an inside move from his tackle position. He just plumb beat out, beat his man, put Felicity down for a loss. He was definitely down. His knee touched. It was not a fumble. Grass with the kick. Coach field that is 17 tries to go up the middle, but good coverage by Pitt. Coach gets a five-yard return out to the 22-yard line. So Penn State will take over at their own 22 with 819 to play in the first half. Jerry Wall, by the way, made the tackle on the punt. It's a 38-yard punt by Rash. George, have you noticed? Pitt defensively doing any kind of stunning or something perhaps that they haven't used before? Well, no, not anything that I know they haven't used before. They slide their linemen one side or the other, their linebackers, and they're coming hard. They're coming, taking the gap, and they're playing man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. It's going to be awfully tough to run. Those are outside and does a good job to get five yards. Took it outside. Richard and Daryl Woods make the tackle for Pitt, but for DJ, it's a five-yard game. He now has rushed for 23 yards on six carries. His average, 4.6, he's rushed for nine touchdowns. It is second down and five. It's a gambling type of a defense, and you can be burned with a play-action pass uh, where you can get somebody deep and you know, a long gain or a touchdown. Of course, you've got to make them respect the run first, and Penn State is not been able to establish its running game. Dozier again, counter to the deep side. To the 30, Dozier, 35, and run out of bounds up near the 38-yard line. So Dozier picks up a Penn State first down. He was run out of bounds by the free safety, Troy Washington. That's that tailback counter that they run so well to the short side of the field. Now they're picking up a pattern of what the Pitt's uh, defensive team is doing. You see that little counter play here with Dan Morgan out front. And a good Miss block tackle. By Good block by Chris Conlon on the tackle. The Dozier picks up yardage for the Penn State first down. A 12-yard game. Manoa. Good speed to the outside. 40, look out. 50. He's in the pit territory at the 49-yard line. Roy Walsh.
Washington and ran him out of bounds, but there you see the speed of Tim Manoa. He's 6'1", 230 pounds, give or take. It's an 11-yard game, but he does have good speed in the outside. Well, all year long, he's been taking this up to the inside. Uh, Clayton does a great job of reach blocking, and so does D.J. Dozier take the, the corner down. And then Timmy Manoa just turns on his feet and gets to the outside. Good block by Dozier on Daryl Woods. Blair Thomas comes into the game. Penn State at the pit 49. There's Thomas on a wing left. Gerald Giles in motion. Manoa, and that'll be another illegal shift. Same thing Pitt did a little bit earlier. Penn State's going to get called for the same thing. Two men in motion. Doesn't have to be at the same time. The game was negligible. Perhaps a yard, yard and a half, so Pitt might want to decline. The important thing, though, to understand is that Penn State's offensive line is starting to establish themselves on the line of scrimmage. You said before, Dozier got a great block from Conlon, who I thought, you know, was, was hurt last week. He's back in the football game in place of Sickler. And then they had, uh, uh, Manoa made a nice run by getting to the outside with a great block from the other tackle. Play. Illegal motion on the offense. Repeat first down. Third penalty against Penn State. Panthers have been flagged twice. So Pitt accepts the penalty, leaves the ball back to the Penn State 46. First down, 15. 6.45 to play in the first half. Schaefer setting up the screen. Connor gets to the 50, and that's a great play by Jerry Olsavsky because there were two blockers ahead of Thomas. He would have gone for a long way, but Olsavsky, the sophomore from Youngstown, brings Thomas down after a gain of four. And Olsavsky came off a block, too. They had him. They were trying to nail him. Straight drop back action, a little screen to the bottom to the bottom of our screen to Thomas was not thrown well, but it was a great play by Olsavsky. That was the first pass Schaefer has hit in a long time. He is now four out of 11. He had missed his last five. Second down, 11. Schaefer looking deep Adam. over the middle, and it is incomplete. Good coverage on the play. The pass intended for Daryl Giles, but back there was Gary Richard, and he had help from the strong safety, Billy Owen. That's a good defensive play. That was an excellent defensive play. That's a, a well-thrown ball, though, and that was that post pattern that we talked about. Now, Penn State had some people open early in the game, especially Hamilton, and they overthrew him. This time, it's on the money, but there's a good play by a defensive back. Richard has three interceptions this year, returned one of them for a touchdown. They put a lot of stock in their cornerbacks and asked them to do a lot of things. Third down, 11. They'll stay one out of six on third down conversion. Schaefer looking sideline, and it is caught for a first down. That's a great reception by Eric Hamilton. Richard makes the tackle, but Eric Hamilton, who does some acrobatic things, pulls down the reception, the 17th catch of the year. That was play action, but it's a great throw through, uh, too. He got it up and high, allowing Hamilton to go over Richard, the defensive back, because uh, Richard was there. It's just a super catch, and the ball was thrown nice and high. A 13-yard reception, good for a Penn State first down. Penn State with five first downs. And they have the football, with 37, 5.48 to play in the half. Penn State leading 10-7. Thomas finds a hole up the middle. That's a good move down to the 30-yard line. Boy, the backs with the great ability can do those kinds of things. The great backs make their best moves at the line of scrimmage. Well, I, I believe Penn State went to an unbalanced line at that time to the wide side of the field, and you'll see Blair Thomas following his fullback Manoa make a cut to the inside. There's a little seam there, and you say great backs have a, a knack of doing those things. Thomas with a seven-yard gain, second down and three. Paul Popper comes in a tight end. Schaefer falls out of a play at the line of scrimmage. Manoa. Cuts up. He's got the Penn State first down to the 26-yard line. Olsavsky with the tackle, but when Tim Noah turns up field and squares his shoulders, not many are going to stop him short of what he is able to get. Well, that was an audible. They ran it back to the short side of field, the tight end, and as you said, when uh, Timmy Manoa makes that cut upfield, he's awfully tough to stop. Steve Smith, in case you're wondering, probably will not play today. He was injured in the Notre Dame game and most likely will not play. So Manoa getting all the work at fullback. David Clark would be his replacement. Dozier back in the ball game. It's a counter. The outside, 20, 15. Dozier, 10, 5, touchdown, Penn State. D.J. 
Dozier, a 26-yard touchdown run. Well, that's another great back. Now, that time Penn State was in a too tight end formation. We've got a flag at the end of the play and a border skirmish in the end zone. Quinton Jones. Well, that would be a dead ball foul, but assessed on the kickoff. All right, let's let's watch this little counter that they run so well. Big hole, and Conlon makes a great block, allowing Dozier to cut back to the inside. Then he does it on his own, breaks the tackle, turns on his feet, and gets into the end zone. And Jones comes high after the DJ gets into the end zone, throws him down. We have a little skirmish again. Watch Shane Conlon, uh, uh, Conlon tackle pop number 57, springing Dozier. Dozier's tenth rushing touchdown of the year. Quinton Jones was hit with the penalty. I don't know if it'll be called a personal foul or face mask. We'll see. Most likely to be assessed on the kickoff since Dozier had already scored. In any event, Massimo Manke is on to attempt the extra point. That was a frustrating type of a penalty, similar to the one that uh, a couple of weeks ago in a pro game with uh, Joe Morris, defensive back after Morris ran in for a touchdown, threw him uh, against the, uh, the boundary wall, and, uh, you know, and he apologized and said, I, my emotions got, you know, I got carried away with my emotions. The touchdown stands, the dead ball foul, a personal foul against Quinton Jones will be assessed on the kickoff. Well, as we thought, in any event, it is Penn State's best drive of the football game. Their first touchdown drive, in actuality, the other touchdown and a kick return. 78-yard drive in nine plays. Dozier finishing off with a 26-yard touchdown run. We've got a, another penalty added on now. John Schaefer's going to get flagged with something. We'll see what happens on the kickoff. Massimo Manka will be on to attempt the extra point. Kisner will hold for Manka, who this year is perfect on extra points. And he remains so. 4.35 to play in the first half. The score, Penn State 17, hit 7. We'll be back right after this. Let's explode a myth that waiting to buy your new 87 Buick Century will save you money. It won't. The sticker price stays the same and your trade-in actually loses value if you wait. Let's explode another myth that you'll have most of the same tax benefits next year. Wrong. Full interest and sales tax deductions will be gone after December 31st. Now is the time to buy the most popular Buick on the road today. 87 Century. Luxury. Comfort. Room for six at your Buick Value Team dealer, where better really matters. Good work, Starship. Why don't you guys take a break? How about a Pepsi? There's only one left. up to the four. 15. He's hit hard at the 20-yard line. Good, solid hit by Gary Wilkerson, sophomore quarterback. And all that pushing and shoving and hitting and personal foul business has this crowd of over 85,000 alive and awake. It seems to me, George, this is a very key series for both teams. You can feel the emotion on both sides. Obviously, it's Pitt versus Penn State. But with the crowd now into the football game, a three downs and out would get Penn State really fired up. And conversely, if it were able to drive, it would quell the crowd. Well, you want emotion. You want, you want your kids fired up. But you want them under control. Four and a half to play, first half. Penn State with its biggest lead of the ball game. Osborne in motion. 
Polinski to throw. Here's the middle screen to Hayward. 25, 30. Hayward is across the 35 and out to the 38-yard line. Pete Giftopoulos made the tackle, but again, the Panthers going to that middle screen, and that has been most successful for them. What they do, Dallas, see, they, they're taking that to the short side of the field, and you'll see Hayward just fake and then slide out. It's a rollout type of a screen. It's a very well-designed play, and obviously they're doing a great job of executing. Greg Hayward now, four catches, 77 yards. Polamalu in at nose tackle for Penn State. Number 99, Kirkendall, left defensive end. Here's a delay to Gladman, looking to get outside, makes a great move on Conlon, and Gladman is out to near first down territory. Charles Gladman picks up 11 and a fifth first down. Ray Isom finally brought him down, but what a move he put on the All-American linebacker. Well, Joe Paterno said he felt Gladman is as good a running back as there is in the country. Uh, he hasn't had a great year this year, but he, you see him out there today in this game, and he looks like a great running back. Now watch this. This is all on his own. Fakes to the inside, breaks it. Watch this move here. Fakes to the outside. That's on Shane Conlon, the All-American. That's a great tackle by Isom. Conlon may be missing a piece of equipment that's lying at about the 48 yard line. First and 10 from the 49. So let's do the straight run. Over the middle, and it is caught. Again, a short pass to Hayward. Makes a move, and a flag is down at the 46 yard. We've got two flags down. One in the offensive backfield. Yes, they may get hit for roughing the quarterback, but there's also a flag at the 45 yard line. So well, this is what I was talking about before. You, you have to have your kids under control. They can't get carried away emotionally with all the things they have at stake here and, and then lose their poise. Because if Pitt comes down and gets a touchdown, then they're going to be really pumped up for the second half. You see Dwayne Downey was in there for the injured Eddie Johnson. Downey, a junior out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Let's sort out the penalties here. Roughing the passer. And a face mask. Both of them against Penn State. So Pitt will have his choice. In any event, they will accept whatever penalty. The gain on the play was only about four or five yards, so the penalty would give them first down. They accept, and that moves the football all the way down to the 31-yard line. So it was definitely a face mask, and Downing was about 190 trying to tackle 260 back to pound back, and he grabbed the face mask. Uh, but they are, they are roughing the passer over here was declined. They had a face mask over here. 15 yards, first down. So it is tacked on to the play. Dead ball on a 15-yard face mask penalty tacked on to the end of the play. So that moves the ball down to the 31-yard line. 3.30 to play in the first half. Tinsley in motion to the far side. Lipsky, short roll. Dumps it off and it is dropped by Craig Hayward. And he had two blockers ahead. Pitt very creative with his passing game, looking to get the ball to Craig Hayward, who is a real load once he gets in the open field. That's the exact same play they've run the, several times before. It's a rollout type of a delay screen. Now, he, he, he comes to the short side. That time he dropped it, but again, it was wide open. He had a blocker ahead. Chris Getz was ahead of him. Let's be 9 out of 18, and he's second down and 10 from the Penn State 31. Gladman looking for a hole, a little bit of a crack, inside the 30 to the 28, a gain of 3 for Charles Gladman. Pete Kirkendall and Ayatoa Polamalu make the tackle for Penn State. Gladman now, by the way, 56 yards rushing and 9 carries. It'll be third down and 7. Clock running now under three minutes. Pitt has used one timeout. They have two remaining. Penn State has their entire complement of three. Pitt is two out of seven on third down conversion. Here's Penn State shows blitz. Here comes Bauer. blitz has got time, firing deep to the corner, and it is overthrown. The pass intended by for Billy Osborne on the sideline. Double coverage over there. And Marcus Henderson came over on the third down pass. That brings up fourth down, and that'll bring on Jeff Van Horn, the field goal kicker. But Stan, it was the pressure of the blitz that made Poliski throw that ball awry that time. They come up from the inside, and they come up clean, and it seems every time they put pressure on them, that's why they're rolling out a lot, 
and dumping it off to Haywood that they're expecting that Penn State's going to put pressure up from the inside. This will be a 45-yard field goal. Van Horn, a freshman, 11 out of 16 this year on field goal attempt. 45-yarder, virtually no angle. Kick is up. Yeah. It looks like it's going to be short, and it is way short. Well, Jeff Van Horn misses the 45-yard field goal and with 2.30 left to play in the first half and all three timeouts remaining, Penn State will try to add to its lead, which currently is 10 points at 17-7. That was a very, very big play for the Penn State's defense because it calmed them down a little bit. They were getting too emotionally into the football game. And then I wouldn't say they were losing their poise, but, you know, they get a little reckless, and then before you know it, the opposing team puts a big play up against them. Well, one of the things that stemmed the tide of the crowd at least was the fact that Pitt was able to drive the ball from the 20 down to the Penn State 30. Let's see if Penn State opens it up here. They've got some time remaining. Dozier in the backfield, keeps his feet. And was lucky to get a couple out to the 30-yard line. Olszewski, the inside middle linebacker, makes the stop and pits 4-3. Second down and eight. The clock runs to 2-14 to play. I would imagine Penn State wants to get one first down, George, before they start using their timeouts and going into the two-minute drill. Well, again, yes, and I think that they definitely they're thinking of at least trying to get three points out of this before the end of the first half. Schaefer is five out of 13. Second and eight. Schaefer over the middle, and it is caught for the first down at the 42-yard line. Again, it is Eric Hamilton with the reception that'll stop the clock with 153 to play. Troy Washington, a sophomore from Duquesne, PA, free safety, made the tackle, and Penn State will line up on the ball. Good call, good throw. They curled Hamilton to the inside over the middle, which they don't do too often. First and 10 from the 42. Schaefer deep over the middle, tight end is wide open, and it is almost intercepted. Good defensive play. Coming across, Quinton Jones, also there, Terrell Austin. Cyberling was open, but the pit safeties reacted very nicely to the ball and knocked it down. Well, they did. They reacted very well. Uh, John looked right at Cyberling, and then both the pit, uh, secondary people read his head and went right to the ball. You know, they always say that secondary people read the quarterback's eyes. I don't have the best eyesight in the world. I don't know how they do that. Well, that's why I say head, because has, nobody can read eyes from about 20 yards deep in the secondary, uh, see a quarterback's eyes. You watch his, they watch his head. Second down, 10, 145 to play on the half. Draw. In the middle of the He's trying to push people around in there, but uh, they push him around, and perhaps a half-yard gain. Walter Johnson made the tackle and now Penn State will utilize its first time out. They have two remaining but they do face a third down and nine. Ron Schaefer will talk it over on the sideline with the offensive coordinator Fran Gannon. Here's some scores from other games. How about this? Ohio State leads Michigan 14 to 3. The winner of that game will go to the Rose Bowl to face Arizona State. Temple leading Rutgers six to nothing in the first quarter. West Virginia at home in Morgantown leading Syracuse seven nothing that also in the first quarter. Clemson leading South Carolina eight to nothing in the first quarter. So there's a big ball game down there. Look at Holy Cross, Gordy Luckbaum and company tied with Boston College at 14. Boston College seeking a bold bid probably get one if they win today. A&M over TCU seven nothing down at College Station in Texas. And then trying to rebound from that loss to Arkansas last week. Bowl bids can be officially extended today at 6 p.m. Although that's certainly a formality with what goes on. I sometimes get the feeling, George, that the bowls are almost set up by about the time Labor Day rolls around. You're absolutely right. But uh, I wouldn't be su uh, surprised to see Penn State come back to that curl pattern that they hit Hamilton over the middle for, uh, middle with a couple of plays before. See the time remaining. It is a third down and nine. Blair Thomas comes into the ball game, plays with Goshen. Schaefer, sideline, and it is dropped. The pass was to Blair Thomas, and he had the ball, but I think you looked up to see where he was and how much he needed for the first down. As it is, that stops the clock, and Pitt will get the football back with about a minute 20 to play, and they'll have an opportunity to do something before halftime. That's the old story of trying to run with the football before you actually caught it. Bruno on to punt. Carroll Austin standing at his own 10-yard line. Austin from Sharon PA, John Bruno, played high school football at Upper St. Clair in Pittsburgh. Been a very solid kicker for Penn State. 
Kidd has the return on. Bruno gets it away. And it takes a pit bounce. And it'll be down outside the 25 at the 27 yard line. So the Panthers will have good field position as they take over. They're all 27. They have a minute 20 to play, and they have two timeouts for man. Now, if you're the defensive coach, George, how do you play this? Well, again, uh, you have to play soft here. I, uh, I, you know, you, you don't want to gamble too much and let them go for a long bomb. Only because you got to remember the pit is going to take chances. So I would play it a little soft and see what they try to do. And definitely I would be looking for that play to Haywood and uh, the draw play and some screens and things like that. Uh, uh, Pitt, is, you know, I think, again, would try to get some kind of points, maybe even just three out of them. First and ten from the 27-yard line. Gladly makes a spin move, and he gets a yard, maybe two, out to the 29. We've got a flag on the play. Inside linebackers Trey Bauer and Pete Giftopoulos make the tackle. Let's see what the flag is. I think it was a legal procedure against Pitt. It would be second down and eight or first and 15 if it is a procedure call. Motion man turned up field a little too quick. Illegal substitution on the part of either that or he's got Hartford. I'm not sure which, but the legal substitution. Right, the official interpretation on that is that the player coming into the ball game did not get to the huddle while the play was being called in the huddle, and you have to be within 15 yards of the huddle. I guess that's to prevent some sneaky play where the guy stands in the sideline and uh, a lonesome end deal. That was the old, yeah. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. 15. When he was running in, he looked like he was in motion. That's why I said. <laughs> so you have to be within 15 yards. You cannot use a walkie-talkie. you got to be uh, around the huddle. So Penn State accepts the penalty. It is first down and 15 from the 22. The clock starts to run. 1-10 to play in the first half. This guy's outside. Show it again. Delay to Gladman. Beats Conlon again. No, nope, he didn't beat him. Conlon grabbed him by the jersey. And the pit equipment man may have to give Gladman a new one at halftime. The gain is out to the 24-yard line. Gain of a couple. It'll be second down and 13. Tim Johnson was the second man in on the play. That time, Gladden made the move on Conlon, but this time, Conlon's fingers were just long enough to grab him by the jersey. Well, when you get a back this nifty, what you have to do is tackle him high, and that time Shane did. If you, you, if you start looking at his feet, he's going to, you know, as you say, leave a piece of the equipment right there in the field. And Pitt is going to play it cozy here. We are down to 30 seconds to play in the first half. It is second down and 13. running in there perhaps the yard of the 25 and that should be the last play of the first half as Matt Johnson makes the tackle for Penn State. Watched out to 21 seconds and I think maybe Penn State might have called the timeout. Yes, they want to force Pitt to punt at least go for a punt block. I I'm a little surprised at the play selection on that. I thought Pitt would, would try to get up field enough to, you know, to maybe go for a field goal or something. They've been moving the ball so well. Uh, because you're not, you're not out of down two scores, and they're going the second half, and uh, you know definitely Penn State has seen what they've been doing to them offensively, and has seen what has hurt their defense. It's been like some impression. Well, I was going to say the penalty may have changed their strategy, but it was only a five-yard penalty. Anything more important than that, George? On first down and ten, they ran a play. It's not like that, but they've had receivers wide open. Uh, we talked before about Kingsley, you know, uh, dropping one, and he. They've had a couple other guys deep that were open in those scenes uh, where they might have gotten the ball far, far enough upfield to get at least the field up. Of course, thinking along with Mike Godfrey, I think there are two options here. Number one, if he has a turnover here and Penn State should score, the ball game with a 24-7 lead might be over. The second thing is Pitt will get the football to start the second half. Well, that could have been his thinking, uh, but he's also, you have to feel that he's got some confidence in his players that they're going to come out and play a very, very strong second half. Third down and 12. Penn State has one timeout remaining. They will use it after third down. Gavin looking outside. Picks up yards for the 30. And Penn State will use his last timeout with 13 seconds to go. They are now out of timeouts, but they will force Pitt to punt. And we've got an injured Pitt player on the field, and it is Bad news, that is Randy Dixon. Russ Grimm, uh, Mark Jim, May, Jim Culver, Jim Sweeney. Jim Sweeney. 
and uh, Dixon's right in right in the mold of, with those players. They've had some great, great offensive linemen. You already mentioned Mark Stepnowski, the sophomore from Erie, what Don Nealon said about him. He said he's one of the best offensive linemen he's ever seen as a sophomore. So Pitt continues to crank him out. You've got linebacker you and uh, offensive, offensive lineman, lineman you. True. And you know this is a good Pitt football team. You know for a few breaks here and there, and you know uh, they easily could have a, a, a much a better win loss record. Looking on Randy Dixon again. He missed last week's game because of an injury. You can spot what happened to Randy Dixon. He's number 69. That's a pretty big pile up there. See Trey Ballard trying to scrape off. And it does not look good as they take him off. He can't put any weight on it. You see him being very careful with him. We'll try to get certainly an updated report for you, but I, judging from that and given the fact that he was hurt last week, I doubt that Randy Dixon will be able to come back. In the I, I was going to make a point before. Coach Godfrey has done a lot of substitutions, uh, substituting both in, in offense and, uh, and on defense. All right, Rasp is going to punt. Now, Penn State looks like they're going to try to block it. Here they come. Rasp gets it away in plenty of time. Coach will let it hit. Five seconds. And the ball is going to be down at the 44-yard line. Still four seconds to play, however, in the first half. And we'll see if Penn State tries to air it out. 27-yard punt. But it did take nine seconds out of the 13 remaining on the clock. Penn State went for the block. Really have no option there. You could probably set up a return, but if you get any kind of a return, unless you go all the way, you're going to run off the clock and never have a chance. Well, the they, if they had a timeout uh, left, they might have tried something. But they, without a timeout left, it, they pretty much uh, they did the wise thing, let the ball fall and keep away from it. And, and uh, I'm sure they're going to. They might try. They're showing a uh, trip formation. Trip formation here. Hail Mary! Here it comes. Schaefer fires it up. Everybody's back there. And the pass falls incomplete. Seven or eight guys are in the area, and that is the end of the first half. The score, Penn State 17, Pitt 7. And we'll be back right after this. Green and using Haywood uh, as a receiver more than actually as a runner has hurt Penn State and the proper use of Gladman in the game. Gladman and Haywood are a tough uh, tandem to stop. We should also point out that Pitt had appealed Sal Janilla's redshirt, although he played a half against Miami. They, because he came down with an asthma attack and could not play, they appealed to the NCAA to get a medical redshirt. However, that was turned down Thursday night, we believe, the information came down. And so Sal Janilla will have just one year remaining at Pitt. Keith Tinsley back deep to receive the second half kickoff. Massimo Manka with a field goal today and a couple of extra points. We'll kick it off. 30 minutes of football to go. 30 minutes and the Pitt Panthers separate Penn State from what they hope will be an undefeated season and a trip to the Fiesta Bowl to play Miami of Florida. The Hurricanes are idle. They have one game left against East Carolina. Kick is deep by Manka. Tinsley five back. And will take it in the end zone for the touchback and the Panthers will start out at their own 20-yard line. First down, 10. Joe Felitsky is in a 9 out of 19, 117 yards rushing. Charles Gladman, good game, 63 yards on 12 carries. Ironhead Hayward, 20 yards on 9 carries, but he's also caught 5 passes for 80 yards. He has scored, Hayward has, the lone Panther touchdown. First and 10, Pitt, their own 20. Slot to the left, the spread offense. Hayward, the lone setback. Hayward gets it on the draw. Looking outside, beats Cobbs, 25. He is dumped by Ray Isom. Isom, who's 5'9 and 175 pounds, dumps Hayward. But Ironhead gets eight. And it'll be second down and two. Well, that time Gladman was lined up as a wide receiver to the top of his screen. He comes back and cuts Cobb. You see right here that he's cut down by Gladman. And Isom has to come up and tackle that big old horse. Randy Dixon is not in the football game. Suffered an injury late in the first half. Second down and three. 
Wagman is hit in the backfield. He'll be dropped for a loss. Donnie Graham, the senior from Brentwood High School in Pittsburgh, throws him for a loss back to the 25-yard line, a three-yard loss. Graham acting as a co-captain today, leads the Penn State Indy Lions in sacks with nine. And Donnie Graham makes quick penetration. Nobody touched him. Gladman had no place to go. Speaking of injured players not coming back in the ball game, Mike Russo, the starting nose tackle, who was injured in the second quarter, has not come back in the football game. And so Matt Johnson, senior out of York, PA, number 51, is playing on the nose. Hit with a third down and five. They are two out of nine on third down conversion. Blitz, Felitsky's in trouble. He gets it away, and it is overthrown. They were again looking for Hayward over the middle, but the blitz by Don Graham put the pressure on Felitsky, and he was forced to get rid of it much earlier than he wanted to. Graham on the blitz, it's fourth and five. I'm sure that's one of the adjustments. They brought Graham, who's an outside linebacker, up, uh, outside linebacker, uh, linebacker up to the inside. You see it to the middle of the screen here, and... The snap is not good on the punt. Isom field to the 43. Isom breaks into the middle, and he's across the 45-yard line into pit territory near the 43. Troy Washington made the tackle. It's only a 33-yard kick. Rasp had a little bit of difficulty with the snap, got off a low, poor kick of 33 yards, and Isom returns it to pit territory. 13.25 to play in the third quarter. It's Penn State 17 and pit 7. We'll be back right after this. For the holidays, we always go to Grandma's. They never leave. She's got this special way she prepares food. What's that special thing you do, Grandma? I cook it. The holidays. This season, I'm eating out. Batter fried shrimp at Long John Silver's. Plump golden brown, and I don't have to cook. Now that's a holiday treat. Gee, Grandma, you're not serious about not cooking, are you? Long John Silver's. Watch me. Sounds good to me. Choose from the full line of Daly's cocktail mixes at your favorite store. 13.25 to play third quarter. If Penn State is able to drive on this, the kicking game will once again come into play after a net gain of 20 yards, a 33-yard punt, and a 13-yard return. Penn State in excellent field position. Manoa and Dozier. Manoa beats one tackle. John Carter came into the backfield, got his arms around Manoa. Manoa shrugged it off and did well to get back to the line of scrimmage perhaps a half yard game we'll call it virtually no game second down and ten good play by Carter and that's and Manoa did it all on his own they moved sidling to the other side hoping that Pitt would adjust but they weren't fooled John Carter Jr. from Angie Louisiana in there at the defensive end second down and ten Hamilton in motion Manoa looking for a hole and there's not much there he's down to the 41 yard line Darrell Woods from his outside linebacking position came in to make the tackle. Give him a gain of three. It'll be third down and seven. And on two plays, the pit defense has managed to get good penetration and gumming up the works. Third down and seven. They say not very successful on third down. Two out of eight. All-out blitz by Pitt. Schaefer fires on the run and throws it too wide. He was looking for Dozier. Carol Austin was over there on the cover. But the blitz by Pitt forced Schaefer to fire early. Even if Dozier had caught it, chances are he would have been stopped shy of the first down. And so Penn State fails on its first possession of the second half. Excellent coverage in the Pitt second half. Austin coming up on Dozier. And Bruno will be looking to punt this one out of bounds. Austin back deep. Far sideline. Ball will hit inside the 10, and it'll roll out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Well, the punt is only good for 30 yards, but no return on the play, and Pitt will have to start out 
at their own 11 yard line. 12.04 to play in the third quarter. The score, Penn State 17 and Pitt 7. We'll be back right after this. Being an all-round cowboy isn't always a case of throwing a perfect loop. Sometimes it's a sack of potatoes. And when you're ready for a second opinion, push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream for a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Well, that was really good. Want some more? Sure. Head for Bush Beer. Head for the mountains. 100 years of Penn State football. In honor of the Century of Excellence, we're proud to offer this limited edition three-volume videotape collection. Volumes one and two include highlights from the Century of Excellence galas. You'll see former Penn State greats and experience the excitement. Volume three is the 1986 season in review. The set is destined to become a collector's item. To order, call 1-800-531-5314. That's 1-800-531-5314. Available in VHS or Beta. Visa and MasterCard accepted. Coming up at the end of the game, we'll select the Pennsylvania Gridiron Classic West player of the game. A $1,000 academic scholarship will be awarded in the name of the Pitt or Penn State Pennsylvania Gridiron Classic West player of the game. This award is sponsored by the Pennsylvania Dairy Promotion Program. I'm wanting you to make it milk. How about a nice cold glass right now? From the 11, first and 10, the Pitt Panthers trailing 17-7. This is Craig Ironhead Hayward. Pitt at the line of scrimmage and thrown. At the line of scrimmage by Bob White, the big defensive end from Freeport, PA. Hayward, virtually no gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10. You notice that Matt Kisner, the Penn State backup quarterback, is warming up along the far sideline. I don't know if John Schaefer was injured on his third down pass attempt or not. We'll wait and see. Second down, 10, 11 and a half to play in the third quarter. Eddie Johnson was injured last week with Notre Dame is still out of the ball game. Dwayne Downey in there at right corner. Gladman, pull up the middle to the 15 and 16 yard line. Give Gladman a gain of five to bring up third down and five. Charles Gladman with a five yard gain. And Matt Johnson makes the tackle for Penn State. Well, so far, neither team has done anything different than they did in the first half. Uh, Penn State playing the run a little bit better. They're stopping Gladman a little bit better. But uh, uh, let's see if uh, Pitt goes to the air here deep in their own territory. Keith Tinsley comes into the game in the place of Billy Osborne. Tinsley dropped one earlier as a wide receiver. Third down and five. Power shows blitz now backs out. Blitzky short drop fires and it is intercepted. Pete Giftopoulos steps in front of the intended receiver and makes the interception. Giftopoulos, who almost had one earlier, made a great defensive play to sneak in front of the receiver. Giftopoulos, his third interception of the season, Penn State's 21st as a team. Well, we said, you know, Giftopoulos is the next tight end, good hands. Now, this is an adjustment made at halftime. This is, again, that delay to Gladman coming out of the backfield. This time, he played a much tighter man-to-man -man step right in front and made the interception. Well, Giftopoulos on his knees making the interception. Penn State's 21st of the season. They are now a plus 19 in turnover ratio. And for Joe Felitsky, that is his third interception of the year. And Penn State starts out at the 17-yard line. Dozier, ball up the middle, inside the 15 and down to the 13-yard line. DJ with a four-yard game to bring up second down and six. Well, Penn State has a chance to put the game away here. And, uh, you know, they have, sp have sputtered inside the 20-yard line. It's very important that they get some points. And Matt Kisner is in the game at quarterback. The senior from Youngwood, PA, played at Hempfield. Only thrown 32 passes this year. You know, Apparently Stan, something is wrong with John Schaefer. Or Penn State might think they have to roll out against the type of defense that Pitt's playing. Tom Frick, double tight end, wing right, second down and six. Kisner at quarterback. Pitch wide, it goes your flags down all over the place. It's not delay of game. There are still three seconds to go on that clock. Let's see what the call is. Whatever. It's a dead ball foul. Possible somebody lining up in the uh, neutral zone. Procedure Procedure. against Penn State. Well, to move it back five. I'll say a second and six. It'll be second and eleven. Didn't see anybody move. 
but uh, the possibility of Kisnam being in there if Schaefer is not hurt, and the fact he's a little bit more mobile than, uh, than Schaefer. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure, offense, the feet are down. Our report is that John Schaefer, in throwing the last incompletion to Dozier on the previous series, hit his hand on someone's helmet and is out of the game. Whether it's for the rest of the game or temporarily, we don't know. But that apparently is the injury of the fourth. Second down and 11. Kisner wants to take off and run. And manages to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's at the 18-yard line. John Carter with the tackle. As Kisner didn't see anyone open and tucked it up and tried to run. It'll bring up a third down and long. That was a good smart play, though. He, he took it back up to the inside and uh, tried to, you know, make a gain out of it. He didn't do anything reckless. Here's John Schaefer. And you see the ice bag on his throwing hand. Schaefer, in the football game, had hit on only six out of 19 for 52 yards. Third down, 11. Kisner. Deep in the end zone, man open. It is dropped. D.J. Dozier trying to catch it over his shoulder. Had the touchdown, couldn't quite hang on. Well, you can't throw the ball any better than that. Let's watch D.J. come out of the backfield. A little fake to the fullback. Matt Kisner does a great job. They got a man for man. He breaks wide open. The ball's over. His, he has to turn his head a little bit. Should have had it, though. And Roundtree breaking to the inside was also open. Off Dozier's hands, a pass that he could have caught. It's a 35-yard field goal attempt now by Massimo Mikey. One for one on the day. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Massimo Mikey, a 35-yard field goal set up by the interception by Pete Gibdopoulos. And with 8.48 to play in the third quarter, it is now Penn State 20 and Pitt 7. We'll be back right after this. Here they are, folks. AT&T lookalikes. Pass them off as the real McCoy. Do they work like AT&T phones? Yeah, they work like AT&T phones. You talk there and listen there. These are beautiful. An unsolicited testimonial. Are they as reliable as my AT&T phone? Don't I look reliable? Oh. Madam, he looks extremely reliable. Now, second-class phones even look like AT&T phones, but they still don't work like AT&T phones. Taxi! After all, you get what you pay for. AT&T, the right choice. It's empty now, but six days a week, these stands are filled with racing fans hoping to pick a couple of winners. Hi, I'm Hugh Gannon for Northeast Lincoln Mercury. It's always easy to pick a winner at Northeast Lincoln Mercury. That's right, you, and right now at Northeast Lincoln Mercury, your winning ticket is the area's best selection of 1987 town cards in stock and ready for immediate delivery from 19999. Visit Northeast Lincoln Mercury at Tyson Avenue and Roosevelt Boulevard in the great Northeast. Coming up at the end of the game, we'll select an offensive player of the game. This award is sponsored by our friends at the fellow Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. We wrote the book. There was a penalty after the field goal, and it was against Penn State, and it's a 15-yard penalty. And so Penn State will have to kick off from its own 20-yard line, which assures Pitt of great field position. No call yet on what the penalty was. There you see Matt Kisner, who came in to run that series after John Schaefer knocked his hand against a helmet. Got an ice bag on it, so it looks like the job belongs to Matt Kisner for the rest of the game. There you see Schaefer sitting on the bench with the ice bag on his hand. Well, Joe said that if Matt got in there, he had a lot of confidence in him, and he looked good in that try there. That was a perfect pass to Dozier. He should have had it for the touchdown. That would have been Kisner's first touchdown pass of the season. Now Keith Tinsley is set to return the kickoff for Pitt. He's lining up at his own 15-yard line. The penalty against Penn State after the field goal. And he will kick it off. It's a ground ball. Fumbled initially. A mishandle, I should say. And the kickoff is going to take the football all the way out near midfield. Chucky Scales picked up the ground ball and returned it. And so the Pitt Panthers have cut the field in half as they take over it's on their side of the 50, but around the 48-yard line. First and 10. 
Andre Collins, freshman defensive back, made the tackle for Penn State. First down, 10. Pitt at their own 48-yard line, trailing 20-7. to 8.41 to play in the third quarter. First turnover of the game was the interception by Felitsky, picked off by Giftopoulos, and it set up a Penn State field goal. Hayward hit in the backfield, and he is dropped for no gain. Shane Conlon made penetration, hit Hayward around the ankles, and dropped him for virtually no gain on the play. That was Shane Conlon coming from his outside linebacker position. Took an inside move. Gets, gets Hayward right around the knees. That's the place to tackle a big load like that. It's going to be a loss of two, George. Good tackle. Hayward losing two on the play. 27 yards now and 12 carries. Second down and 12. Out of the eye. Play fake to Hayward. Polinski to Osborne, and they're going to rule. No, there's no he was knocked down. The pass is complete for about a two-yard gain. The pass complete to Osborne. They almost dropped to one knee, which would have killed the play, but he managed to stay upright. The pass completion is good for a couple to bring up third and ten. Well, it's play action. You'll see to the right of the screen, and Osborne just goes out and hooks up about two, three yards past the line of scrimmage. Slips a little bit, but he had no place to go. And Henderson's there to make the tackle with two other people. Third down and ten. Pitt is two out of eleven on third down conversion. Hayward, long motion far side. Polinski fires over the middle, and it is incomplete. Wide open on the play was Michael Stewart. On the pass was a bit high, but it's a pass that Stewart should have caught. And you always wonder about wide receivers wearing gloves, and it's in the mid-40s. It is not that cold. Well, I'm against it. That was a well-designed play. Uh, they got single coverage on Stewart to the sideline, and they faked. Haywood went over and picked up the blitz, and the ball was right there. Grass punting to Ray Isom. Isom will let it hit, and it takes a Penn State bounce, and they're going to rule it out of bounds at the 24-yard line. So it's only a 28-yard punt, and again, Rask with two consecutive bad punts of 33, Yards and 28, then Penn State will start out at their own 24-yard line. 7.09 to play, third quarter. The score, Penn State 20, Pitt 7. We'll be back right after this. We were on stakeout duty for Bellow, Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Well, why should I advertise in your book when I'm already in the Bellow, Pennsylvania Yellow Pages? Well, uh, I mean, how many people are going to use your book? Well, I just... <laughs> Basic, fellas. The genuine Yellow Pages comes from Bell of Pennsylvania. 99% of the public knows it on site. 85% of them call them businesses they find there. You see? What? Well, you can judge a book by its cover. Don't be fooled. Advertising the genuine Yellow Pages from Bell of Pennsylvania. We wrote the book. For the holidays, we always go to Grandma's. They never leave. She's got this special way she prepares food. What's that special thing you do, Grandma? I cook it. The holidays. This season, I'm eating out. Batter fried shrimp at Long John Silver's. Plump golden brown, and I don't have to cook. Now that's a holiday treat. Gee, Grandma, you're not serious about not cooking, are you? Long John Silver's. Watch me. Sounds good to me. 7.09 to play in the third quarter. Penn State at their own 24-yard line. This football game is hanging in the balance. There's no question about that. A touchdown by Pitt would bring them within a touchdown. A touchdown by Penn State would give them a three-touchdown lead. Kisner, quarterback, hands off to Dozier. Dozier hit in the backfield, and he'll lose the yard to the 23-yard line. Pitt continuing to get excellent pressure and penetration in the backfield. Tony Siragusa, a sophomore from Kenilworth, New Jersey. He has seven sacks on the year. He gets the tackle there. No gain for Dozier. Pitt was in an over defense that time. We wanted the tackles over the over Penn State center. Come off the block real well. Good pursuit by the whole uh, Pitt defense. Second down, 10. Jerry Hug. Ray comes into the wide receiver. Kisner 0 for 1 passing. And we've got another whistle. And a flag. It seemed to be another dead ball motion penalty. Someone's moving inside. It may have been Chris Conlon, number 57, the offensive tackle. Imperceptible movement. 
from up here anyway. It's a five-yard penalty instead of second and ten. It's second and fifteen. Well, once he has his hand down, he cannot move, and that might be what be happening. But this is uncharacteristic of Penn State. Second down and fifteen. The pace of this game is slow to a snail's pace. Another frenetic first half. Not much doing here in the second half. Safety blitz. Kisner firing deep. Hamilton wide open. Hamilton has gone for a touchdown. Matt Kisner to Eric Hamilton. 79-yard touchdown pass. Well, it is Kisner's first touchdown pass of the year. And for Eric Hamilton, his fourth touchdown reception. The longest pass play of the season for Penn State. Well, Kisner's thrown two balls, and both should have been touchdowns, because that was a perfect pass. We mentioned this before. You play man-to-man -man coverage long enough, and you're going to get burned. Jones got burned. Yeah, Hamilton, man-to-man. -man. They put a rush on. But you took the uh, protection was excellent, but the ball was thrown perfectly. And when your receiver gets out there like that, you got to hit him. Quinn Jones, the man covering on the play, was beaten and then stumbled and fell. Massimo Manka to attempt the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. 6.08 to play, third quarter. Penn State now has taken a 27-7 lead over the Pitt Panthers. And we talked about that tight coverage on the corner. You know, it's great, but you can get burned deep on it. Well, remember a few years back when uh, Boston College, you see it again here, Kisner, you can't throw the ball any better. But there's excellent protection. They picked up the blitz, and Hamilton just did a little stop and going. And Jones fell down a little bit, but he was beaten all the way. But a perfectly thrown football. A few years ago against Boston College, Boston College kept blitzing, blitzing, making Penn State look bad. And they finally ended up getting beat badly when Blackwood threw about three, four touchdown passes to Kenny Jackson. Let me ask you, George, did you notice on the play, did both safeties come or just the free safety on that play? I, I, um, they had a blitz coming up to the inside. I don't know if both of them came, but it definitely was man-to-man -man coverage on Hamilton. But they picked it up, and I'm sure that was one of the adjustments that they made at halftime. Let's keep the backs in and go one-on-one -on -one with our wide receivers to try to get a, a touchdown, and that time it was successful. Well, that didn't take long. Two plays, 76-yard drive. Remember, there was a penalty on the play. It ends up being a 79-yard touchdown pass from Matt Kisner to Eric Hamilton. Remember what we said, Pitt relies heavily on its corners. They like to blitz, and when you do that, you put your corners in man-to-man -man coverage, and you've got the plan, or you get burned. And that's pretty much the scenario. Keith Kisner, back deep, waiting for the kickoff by Massimo Mike. Kinsley backs up to the two-yard line. 15, 20. And the boundary, as much as anything else, saved Penn State as Kinsley got across the 30-yard line. Dwayne Downing made the first hit, and Troy Davis also in there to help out and force Keith Kinsley out of bounds, the senior from Detroit. 6.02 to play in the third quarter. Penn State has scored the only points of the second half. 35-yard field goal by Manka and a 79-yard bomb from Matt Kisner in there for an injured John Schaefer and Eric Hamilton, the senior from Cleveland, Ohio. And remember in the first half, Hamilton was wide open and Schaefer was shot. First down and 10. Hit at their own 31. Politsky, hitch pass in the flat. The Blue Osborne, Dwayne Downing hits him. And the rest of the blue shirts show up. It's a five-yard game in the pass to Billy Osborne, Dwayne Downing, and Marcus Henderson, the first defenders on the scene. It'll be second down and five. That was the type of play that Steve Burrow and Notre Dame hurt them with. But you got to have a strong arm to do that because that can be dangerous. If Downing stepped in front of that ball, it would have been another six. 79-yard pass ranks as the fourth longest touchdown pass in Penn State history. They had one for 90, one for 86, and two for 80. Actually, it's the fourth longest. 79 yards. Charles Gladden. Pete Kirkendall, the defensive end, Gladden's still on his feet, loses his footing across the 40 and out near the 42, which should be a pit first down. Trey Bauer made the tackle. But once again, Gladwin made several people miss and just shows how much talent he has. He's a fine running back. He's as good a running back as we've seen all year. Gladman, 70 yards, 15 carries. Now, he has had problems fumbling the football this year, which is one of the reasons that he was one of the tenants in Mike Godfrey's doghouse, but not today. Ball to 42. That is a pit first down. Under five minutes to play third quarter. 
Belitsky, 11 out of 24, 124 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. He has had several drops. Broken play, and Belitsky is going to be sacked, if you want to call it that. That was a broken play. Someone missed an assignment. Tim Johnson gets credit for the tackle, but Belitsky was looking to hand that off. I think it was supposed to be a draw play or, or to the fullback, and uh, he missed it. Let's see it. But Johnson comes. He has, uh, they, there was no place to go. That was a broken play, and it's a loss of fit. It's a loss back in the 38-yard line. It'll be a second down and 14. We've got an official's timeout on the field. Bob Sign may be injured on the play. Oh, no, looking at Joe Felitsky. Joe Felitsky on the tackle by Tim Johnson has injured his right leg, right ankle, right knee. You see him limping on that right leg. And that'll bring on Sal Janella. Janella, who was chosen by Mike Godfrey to start the Miami game, did not play well in that game, hitting three out of 12, only 25%. No touchdowns. He was picked off three times. He was to have started the game last week against Rutgers, but came down with an asthma attack, which hospitalized him. He's been given the okay to play, but now Sal Janilla, who was not able to get the extra year of eligibility, and now will have just next year left, will take over the pit offense. And the tough spot, his team is down by 20 points and facing a second down and 14. I wouldn't be surprised if Penn State goes after him right away. There Here it comes is. Don Graham. He shovels it off to Hayward. Hayward catches it, and he is down at the 38-yard line for no gain. Notice how Graham is coming up the inside from his outside linebacker position. A little game going on. He's coming in and at three. Graham put the pressure on Janela. Shane Conlon made the tackle on Hayward for no gain. All right. You see it right here. New quarterback, and it's good football, good defensive strategy. Put the heat on him right away, and they stop Hayward. Now, this is the same type of play that they were hurting Penn State with before. Penn State seems to have made the adjustments to those backs coming out of the back. George is Conlon shadowing Hayward from what you've been able to see? I don't think he's been shadowing, no. I think they just went to man-to-man -man coverage and tighter coverage on the backs in the backfield one-on-one. -on -one. So if they do come out, the, the linebackers are right there with them. Draw to Charles Gladman, and he'll pick up yardage of about nine after the 47, but well short of the first down. Don Graham, who's had a good day for Penn State, makes the tackle. The senior from Pittsburgh, and that'll bring up fourth down and five, and in the course, hits the punt to Penn State once again. We've got three minutes to play in the third quarter. Ray Isom goes back deep for Penn State inside his 20. Better kick this time by Rask. Isom fields it at the six-yard line. Keeps his feet. The 20, still on his feet, 25, and out to the 27-yard line. Heck of a return by Ray Ison over nearly 21 yards after a 47-yard punt. Robert Bradley made the tackle for Pitt, but a good return by Ison. Had to wonder why he would field the ball at the six. There is a flag down on the play at the line of scrimmage. Well, Stan, I, I was going to say, why did he feel the ball and he turns around and makes a great play at it? Ison, the senior from Harrisburg, the flag is down at the line of scrimmage. have a conference call without telephones here. The fifth defense is on the field, as is the Penn State offense. But it's not a clip or anything like that because the flag is lying at the line of scrimmage, the 48-yard line, the fifth 40. The, the flag is exactly where Ison went down. Well, the flag is at the line of scrimmage. If you look back at the 48-yard line, which was the line of scrimmage on the Oh, you're talking about five. the previous? Time. Yeah. We may have offsetting penalties. We may be forced to kick it over again. Then again, we may be debating the European common market. Here comes the football back upfield. And the pit punt team comes back on the field. We had two line ball fouls. We had hold, hold blue, against the Lions. face mask, white, Pulling the face offset, against pit. fourth down repeated. All right. No additional explanation needed. <laughs> we'll do it all over again. Yeah. 
pass. This kick is low and it's much shorter. Ison fields at the 12. Gets across the 20, near the 21 yard line. So it'll gain about six yards in field position on that exchange. Bob Sign made the tackle on the special team. A 41 yard punt and a nine yard return. 2.35 to play, third quarter. Joe Felitsky, injured, previous series. On his afternoon, Felitsky, the junior from Pittsburgh, had hit on 11 of 24, 11 of 24 yards. He was limping out of there. Now Penn State will take over, looking to run some time off the clock, although there's still a lot of time left in this football game. Bob Morosco, again, a tight end. Countered it up there, Thomas. Breaks a tackle, 25, Thomas, 30, Thomas to the 40, Thomas brought down from behind at the 45-yard line. Billy Owens, the strong safety, and perhaps the last man to have a great shot at him, brought Blair Thomas from behind. What a running back he is. This is an example, an acceleration. Sickler to tackle, leads up, he breaks a tackle, makes a move, then he accelerates, he gets right into high gear. 26-yard gain by Blair Thomas. He now has 33 yards on two carries. He is averaging eight and a half per carry for Penn State. And of course, he had a 91-yard kickoff return. First down, 10. Penn State outside their 45. David Clark into pit territory and down to the 41-yard line. David Clark, the senior from Deptford, New Jersey, playing as a fullback today, is brought down by the twin safeties, Billy Owens and Carol Austin. But David Clark with a nice gain of 13 yards. One of the simplest plays in football, just a straight hand off to the fullback. <laughs> Madison to center, seal back off to the inside, picks up the linebacker. Big game for Penn State. At the 42-yard line, first and 10. Minute 55 to play third quarter. Hamilton in motion with Thomas on a wing left. Clark on the draw, looking for blocking. They're in much. Good defensive play for Pitt. Tony Woods, Jerry Olsafsky, Billy Owens are all in there in the backfield. And Clark will use uh, lose yard. There was another good example. And they, they pulled Sickler and the defensive lineman just got in his back pocket, followed him. He was going to lead Clark around to the short side, and uh, there was no place to go. Interesting, though, George, since that was a trap. If you're an offensive team, don't you want the defense to get penetrated across the line of scrimmage? No, but if, if, if the man that pulls, the man that's lined up on him is short sometimes, you just follow him, get right behind him, and if there's any containment on the other side, he'll be in the back pocket and he can pull the ball for his is going to be sacked. He took a deep drop, and it is Tony Woods, the All-American from Newark. His second sack of the ball game, his 13th sack of the season, and drops Kisner way back in Penn State territory at the 48-yard line. It'll be third down and about a mile and a half. 45 seconds to play third quarter. Third down and 20. Let's see if Penn State comes with the screen to Thomas is in the ball game. It's a good time for it. Thomas, number 32. David Clark, number 48. On third down and 20. Penn only two out of 10 on third down conversion. Kisner flushed out, got him in, open deep. But Kisner chooses to run the football to the fifth 48, well short of the first down. And that'll bring us to the close of the third quarter. Walter Johnson is given credit for the tackle on the play as the clock runs out for the third quarter. 15 minutes to go. Penn State. Winning the quarter 10 to nothing, and they've extended their lead to 27 to 7. We'll be back right after this. The night has a beat of its own. Feel of its own. A beer of its own. Exceptionally smooth, Niccolo. It could make tonight the best part of your day. 100 years of Penn State football. It's an anniversary filled with memories and steeped in tradition. In honor of the century of excellence, we're proud to offer this special edition commemorative book. Inside, you'll find articles written by the nation's top sports writers on the early years at Penn State, the Penn State All-Americans, 
Coach Joe Paterno and the Penn State winning tradition. Specially priced at $10, it's destined to become a collector's item. To order, call 1-800-531-5314. That's 1-800-531-5314. Visa and MasterCard accepted. We made it! Our first real deal! Now if we can just make our flight. Oh, you're hot, you're hot. Agent, agent, we got red hot cars. How good a deal did we get on that car? When you're hot, you're hot. Every year, the guys in the NFL get bigger, faster, stronger. But my toughest competition isn't men, it's these machines. That's why Holiday has earned the right to be the official training center of the NFL players. And why I get bigger, faster, and stronger every year. $3.98 a week plus three months free has been extended through Wednesday at 10 p.m. Any place else, and you're not playing with the pros. Let's pause now for station identification. The 13-yard line, fielding it inside is 10, which normally is a no-no. It will start out at their own. 13-yard line, downfield, Quintus McDonald, the sophomore from Montclair, New Jersey, number 92. Stan Pitt had a return to the left, and Bruno, I think, picked it up, and he kicked it away from the return men, and it was too far to go for the ball carrier. 44-yard kick. There are the stats for today's game. Penn State, which trailed throughout the entire first half, is now caught up to Pitt. Pitt had 189 yards total offense in the first half. They only had 25 yards total offense in the third quarter. Sal Janilla at quarterback. Joe Felitsky on the bench with an injured leg. Janilla to throw. He's rocked. He's going to lose his footing. He would have been sacked nonetheless back inside the five-yard line. Bob White scared him down as Sal <laughs> well, lost his footing to the four. They, that was a blitz. They came with Shane Conlon, too. You'll see the bottom of your screen. Bob White takes an inside move. A little game going on in there, but Janilla went down anyhow. Chris Getz, number 72, was beaten by White on the play. Chris, a freshman from Jackson Heights, New York. The loss is nine yards. It's second down and 19. By the way, we have a readjustment on the touchdown pass from Kisner to Hamilton. Officially, it is 82 yards. And that is the third longest pass completion in Penn State history. An 82-yard touchdown bomb from Kisner to Hamilton. For those of us who have to count in our kidneys, we have some problems at times. Second down, 19. Pitt in a big hole. They'll pass out of their end zone. Janela fires, and it is caught up at the 10-yard line. And sneaking across to the 11-yard line is Hosea Hurd. Trey Bauer made the tackle hurt, a freshman from Valdosta, Georgia. Nonetheless, it'll be third down and very long yardage, 12 for the first down. Three-man rush, Penn State went into eight zones, and they just curled the herd in for a short round there for a short game. Janilla got him the football. George, as I mentioned, Pitt had 189 yards total offense, first half, 25 yards in the third quarter. Any adjustments visible that you see? Well, the big thing is they stopped Haywood coming out of the backfield. That's number one. And number two, they're playing much more aggressively up front and doing more blitzing. First and 12. And Pitt is two out of 13 on third down conversion. Janela's in trouble. He gets it away. It is incomplete. He did well just to get it away. Pete Giftopoulos on the rush for Penn State. Janela throwing out of his end zone, and they will now be forced to punt out of the end zone. And that also answers your other question. In the last couple of series that Pitt's had the ball, Penn State's used all kinds of stunts. They brought Graham up the middle. From an outside linebacker to bring Conlon from the outside. That time the good gives top of this up to make. Rash gets it away in the face of a big rush. Coach at his own 46. He's up the middle of the 40. Hit and drop from behind at the 37-yard line. Unquestionably, the kicking game, and we've got a fight breaking out. And there are flags all over the place. A big fight breaking out. I don't know who the instigators were. Several players involved in it. Dan, I saw that one well. It's, uh, it, it was some pushing, then some punching, and again, I think it's going to be one of those uh, situations where you're going to get both sides penalized. Well, if it rains, the field is covered by penalty flags. 13.04 to play in the football game. It's going to be sorted out. Penn State would have the ball at the 37, barring the penalty yardage. One of the big keys in this game, George, has been kick returning. Coates and Isom and Thomas with the kick returns, and they have given Penn State not only scores, but also field position. Here's the penalty call. Personal foul. 
Dead ball foul. Out. And two players have been thrown out of the game. Well, maybe that's the best way of handling those things instead of even throw. Well, you got to call a foul before you can throw them out. Uh, but if you can ask me what a two so far the game isn't over yet, what's the most outstanding things about Penn State uh, is the fact that, that the specialty teams have played so well, and Joe Paterno felt that to have a, an undefeated season, they would have to win one game. And I think they're probably the uh, mostly instrumental in, in this today's game. And the other thing is Matt Kisner coming in and doing a good job because he'll be their quarterback uh, for next year. This is only a guess, but Scott Gobb, the Penn State linebacker from Pittsburgh, Bethel Park, looked rather disconsolate along the sidelines. As we don't know if it was him or not, but he looked uh, as disconsolate as one might be after being banished from the kingdom. Don't know who the pit player is. We'll try to get word from the sidelines as to who the two players were involved and who have uh, played their last football this afternoon. Well, there's a lot of bragging rights involved in here. A lot of these, you know, you got 19 players from uh, Penn State from Pittsburgh area. Some of these uh, kids have played against each other in high school. They certainly know each other. From the pit, 36-yard line. Goji on the wing right. Manoa is the fullback. This is Manoa. Finding a hole and driving forward. And getting near the 30-yard line. Tim Manoa from the Pittsburgh. Six-yard game. Second down and four. Matt Kisner, who was in a quarterback battle in preseason. The battle was won by John Schaefer. Early on in the year, Joe Paterno alternated quarterbacks, alternated units, actually. But since about the fourth game of the year, it has been all John Schaefer. Kisner getting his chance. Schaefer losing his hand. Second down and four. Manoa again. Manoa still on his feet inside the 25 and down to the 22-yard line. Big Tim Manoa averaging nearly six yards per carry this year. Picks up a first down. The gain is eight. Manoa now 41 yards on 10 carries. Daryl Woods made the tackle. Now, that's a simple play, but that's a halftime adjustment, too. That's a hit straight hand off to the fullback with a reverse pivot. And when you get a team that pursues sideline to sideline, as Pitt does, as well as they do, sometimes going straight at them, is much, you're much better off. And you can see right there, big, a big horse like Manoa gets some steam up here. Guard for Penn State. This is Dozier on the counter. Looking to get outside. He does. He to the 15. Dozier has run out of bounds near first down yardage at the 12 yard line. Dozier picking up nine yards. Zeke Gadsden made the tackle. Great, great trap blocked by Conlon, number 57. You see him pulling right there. There's that counter again. Now Dozier turns it on. Get, tries to get to the sideline and is forced out. Gadsden, number 26, came to Pitt as a running back. But that was the year they had so many running backs. Ryan had Hayward and Gladman. Ryan Davis was on the scene for a year, and so they moved Zeke to a linebacker. Dozier, nine yard game. He has 76 yards rushing on the afternoon. It is second and one. Dozier looking wide. Got the first down. He's inside the 10 near the eight yard line. Then they will have his first and goal. And if there is some doubt remaining in this game, surely a touchdown here would ice it for Penn State. Steve Apke made the tackle for the pick Panthers. That time, Penn State won, uh, went unbalanced, took their tight end over, put him as a wing back as an extra blocker, and ran a pitch sweep there and goes to make the First and goal, football at the nine. Clock running, 11.40 to play in the game. Keith Radisic, the senior from Brentwood High School in Pittsburgh, comes out over the football. Major moves to a wing left. Manoa hit at the line of scrimmage and stopped for perhaps a half yard. Jerry Olsavsky, the middle linebacker, made the hit on Manoa. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and goal from the nine. A lot of interest in this game in the Southland, primarily where the sun always shines in Miami. All three Miami television stations are here to cover this game. The implications, obvious. I think this is the cold weather. Kisner on the roll. He's going to run it. Kisner to the five, and Kisner has run out of bounds near the two-yard line. Matt Kisner doing what he does very well, running with the football, is run out of bounds by Tony Wood. The gain is seven. It'll be third down and goal. They're going to mark him down 
been was they went to two tight ends with the flanker to the sidelines with a rollout action, flipping the backs in the flat. Pit dropped off. Kisner got outside of contain and did the wise thing and ran. They do mark him out of bounds at the two yard line. It'll be third down and goal. Penn State will line up in a power eye. The third back in the ball game is Blair Thomas. Dozier is the deep man. Watch the pitch to Dozier. That's going to be Blair Thomas. Thomas touchdown, Penn State. Blair Thomas scores his second touchdown of the ball game. And Penn State has increased their lead to 33 to 7. A lot of times we use Dozier and uh, Manoa as blockers, but Blair Thomas is going to be a great back. Conlon pulls again. Watch him find the crack to the inside. A lot of bodies in there, and he takes it in for the touchdown. Another round, you watch him go. He's not that big, but he can really accelerate and get up in the hole. Right behind his fullback and his big tackle time. Massimo Lanka to attempt the extra point. And the kick is good. Penn State has opened up a commanding lead with 10.40 to play. It's Penn State 34, Pitt 7. We'll be back right after this. If there's one thing I've tried to teach my linebackers over the years, it's don't get faked out. Hold your ground, keep your head up, use your eyes. Send for speed. Same goes for businesses. If you want to reach customers when they're ready to buy, the genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages is the book you want. If you want your ad to hit with maximum impact, don't be fooled. Advertising the genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. They wrote the book. of Daly's cocktail mixes at your favorite store. Today's game is being brought to you by Westinghouse Electric Corporation and its 120,000 employees worldwide dedicated to quality and excellence. Is that Sheila E? One of those punk rockers. That's Peter Hairdresser. One of the keys in this football game is rushing yards. Pitt has managed to only rush for seven yards in the second half. He's been behind in the fourth quarter of football. Phoenix, Arizona, Tempe, Arizona, Arizona, and more exact for Wake Penn State. Bank is kicked. His lead to the two. Cuts inside for 20, 25 flags now. At the 20-yard line, Troy Davis makes the tackle on the kickoff team, but again, we have flags. It's getting to be the exception when you see a, a kickoff return without a flag. It'll go against Pitt. It'll cost him half the distance. Penn State on the touchdown. Moving 36 yards, seven plays, all on the ground. Two, hundred, two minutes and 24 seconds on the time of possession. You see the clip right there. Uh, that's Tinsley trying to get up into the inside. Finley has the distance to the goal. It really has been saddled with awful field position in the second half. 10-33, the play in the football game. Blair Thomas, the second touchdown of the ball game. Charles Gladman looking outside. He's in big trouble. Dwayne Downing's got him and throws him for a loss back at the three-yard line. Conlon was the guy who really got penetration and forced Gladman to go wider than he wanted. And Dwayne Downing, playing at the corner, makes the tackle. Another flag is down. The loss would have been seven. Let's see what happened on the penalty. You see Conlon stringing it out, as you said, Stan. All right. 
Now Glavin had to take it back way, way outside. So downing number four could come up, could come up and make a tackle. Personal foul against Pitt. That'll be declined unless it was dead ball. Even if it is only a yard and a half penalty. Yep, dead ball foul, so it's tacked on to the play and moves it back to the two-yard line. It's second down and 18. Dead ball. Personal foul. Personal foul. Right half the distance to the goal. Second down. You might see a safety here. You know, I've got a hunch Penn State's going to come after that. Second down and 18. Let's see if Mike Godfrey orders a pass. Or if he tries to give himself a little running run. Gladman breaks through a crack and gets out to the 10 on the 11-yard line. Good run by Charles Gladman, a gain of nine to bring up third and nine. Trey Bauer and Dwayne Downing make the tackle. Once again, an excellent run by Gladman. Found a little crack on the left side of the line and busted in there. 80 yards rushing for Charles Gladman on 18 carries. Four and a half per carry. Good block by Hayward. I don't think you can correct me if I'm wrong. But any running back has rushed for 100 yards against Penn State. That was a team now, an individual. I don't think so this year. Third down and nine. Three-man rush. You know, a fire's drop by Hayward. Went back to that circle in route. Hayward dropped the pass. And once again, Pitt will be forced to punt from their end zone. Well, it was a little behind him, but the coverage was there. And Hayward knew the last few times that he came out of the backfield with somebody there, try to run without the ball. Rask gets it away. It's a poor punt. Hits the 35 and gets a good roll. And the punt will roll out of bounds at the 45-yard line. As it turns out, it's a 34-yard punt with no return. But again, Penn State will take control of the football in pit territory. 9.03 to play in the football game. Penn State has the football game well in hand with a lead of 34 to 7. We'll be back right after this. An investment firm is only as impressive as it is responsive. It's a go. So when interest rates fell, we looked for new ways for our clients to make money and developed unique opportunities like the Prudential Real Estate Investment Trust, a first of its kind in a way to take advantage of changing markets. While others may imitate it, we're busy surpassing it. If anyone can show you bold new thinking in the business of making money, let's close it. It's Prudential Beach, rock solid, market wise. 7 a.m. Time to put on the game face and step into the power suit. It's called gearing up in America. He's got American written all over him, right down to his clothes. The American look. Get it at Anderson Little. Men's Shepherd and Strathmore suits. Now 149 to 179 at Anderson Little. You see the time remaining in this 86th meeting? between Pitt and Penn State. Last year, Penn State a 31 to nothing winner. Margin nearly that now. Alan Horniak, a senior number 27, comes into the ball game as a running back. This is David Clark. He gets down to the 41 yard line for a gain of four. Clark averaging better than four yards per carry. Tony Woods made the tackle. The roar you are hearing is merely for the wave. Well, we haven't seen the crowd get this much into it all year long here at Penn State. Second down and six. Kisner over the middle, and it is caught. The pass complete to Paul Pomfret. The tight end. Makes the reception. Zeke Gadsden made the tackle. Pomford, that's his first catch of the 1986 season. He is a senior from Clifton, New Jersey. Uh, he's a senior tight end that had been hurried earlier. Watson comes across, makes a nice catch, gets the first down. Penn State going with an all-second team unit here. Mike Wolf is the center. Jeff Brubaker on the offensive line. 
Ed Monahan, Stefan Davis. Clark trying to get outside to the 30. Clark dives to the 25-yard line. David Clark getting a chance to play. Robert Bradley, freshman from Elizabeth, New Jersey, on the left corner, makes the stop for fifth. But the gain for David Clark is six. It'll be second down and four. As Steph Stephon Davis and Pomfrey both do a good job. Clark takes it to the outside, shows some more speed than what he really had. Troy Cromwell comes in as a wide receiver. Sid Lewis in as a wide receiver, a senior. Counter to Blair Thomas. Not much regular this time, and Blair has stopped for a yard game to the 24-yard line, where it'll be third down and three. Clock running, 7.15 to play in the football game. This will be Joe Paterno's 198th career victory. And it looks like his sixth undefeated season. Somebody asked me six or seven. I think it's six. Be six. Third down and three. Blitz. Kisner fires. Intercepted. Troy Washington. Washington is gone. Washington to the 30. Washington to the 20, 10, 5, touchdown pit. Troy Washington, the sophomore from Duquesne, the return, 82 yards for a Panther touchdown. Well, Matt Kisner forced the ball. It's the first mistake he's made since he came in as a substitute for the injured John Schaefer. He was actually just throwing for the first down. He was looking for an out, outlet man over the middle, and Troy Washington was sitting right there, picks it up, got excellent speed, Took it to the outside, picks up some blockers, became a foot race, and Pitt has got his second touchdown. That is the fifth interception that the Panthers have returned for a touchdown this season. Jeff Van Horn out to attempt the extra point. 6.35 to play. 82-yard touchdown return for Troy Washington, the sophomore from Duquesne, Pennsylvania. Kick by Van Horn is good. Washington picked it off. He was gone. Off uh, he was race. real gone. 6.35 to play in the football game. Penn State over fifth, 34-14. We'll be back right after this. When you're deciding where to go for a burger, look at it this way. On one side, you've got the McDLT. On the other side, you've got the Whopper. So it's just a matter of choosing between frying at McDonald's and flame broiling at Burger King. Between a burger they'd rather serve their way and a burger fixed your way. So when it comes down to this, it's as easy as this. This is a Burger King town. We know how burgers should be. The night has a beat of its own. A feel of its own. A beer of its own. Exceptionally smooth, Niccolo. It could make tonight the best part of your day. The Pitt Panthers have their following here, and that is Joe Felitsky's father. Joe Sr. here to watch his boy. He was injured a little bit earlier. Penn State expecting the onside kick. The Swiver Coates has to run up and try to fall on it, which he does. Kind of died there. DJ Dozier also went on the onside kick return unit. They fall the ball to the 21-yard line. Well, they both realize it's a free ball. If the pitch ball's on, it's pitch ball. But just to say something about that uh, last interception, some people I know, the fans would say, why not keep the first string in, get another touchdown. Joe Paterno played that last series of down. If most of the seniors are not going to be here uh, next year as a tribute to them, let them get some playing time in. And it doesn't make any difference whether you win by uh, 24, 34, as long as you win the football game. State committing a rare turnover. This is David Clark, and he has stopped for no gain. Walter Johnson made the tackle for a pit. Second down and 10. No gain on that play. Okay, the 
among the many philosophies of head coach Joe Paterno. About to go 11 and 0. Seven times Pitt, or rather Penn State, has gone into the final regular season game undefeated. Six times they have come through. This would make it seven out of eight. There, Thomas breaks outside to the 25, and it's a good stick by Troy Washington. Otherwise, Thomas would have gotten to the outside. The gain is out to the 26-yard line. Billy Owens finally gets the tackle. A gain of five to bring up third down and five for the sophomore from Philadelphia. You know, Stan, Joe Paterno know, knows and knew that Blair Thomas had a lot of talent and he's somebody to look at for the future. But I don't think even he expected Thomas to develop so, so soon, you know, this early in his career as a sophomore. Third down and five. Clock running, 5.15 to play in the football game. Draw to Thomas. Thomas, spin move, but he's short of the first down. Gary Olsavsky made the tackle, a four-yard gain for Thomas, but he is a yard shy of the first down, and Penn State will be forced to punt. John Bruno, a senior. We'll kick it away. Just about his average. His average is 40.7 on the year. Oh, 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 Pick goes for the block, but Bruno gets it away. Good high kick. Austin all the way back to the 23 yard line. Looking for the wall, there isn't any. And Penn State runs him out of bounds. Along the spot where he fielded the football, now he's got another fight breaking up. Much of this this afternoon, I recognize that feelings run high in this game, but this is unnecessary. I think most would agree. I don't think that was a late hit, and I think Austin turned around and threw the ball at uh, Coach, and uh, then the punching started. And you got to call him like you see him. It was a 47-yard punt, minus yardage on the return. Help play referee. Well, now the Burbick Tyson fight is until 10 10 30 tonight. Uh, this is a <laughs> preliminary bout here on the undercard. Well, you don't want to see that because it, it, it takes away from the game. You know, you like to see a hard hitting football game and, and, and you know, not go beyond that and have kids uh, let their emotions get carried away. Uh, you don't want to see, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I mean, uh, Pitt has had their day where they really dumped Penn State hard on several occasions over the years. Let's see if we take a look at it here. Now, I don't think that was a late hit. And I think you see, yeah, now Austin will get up and throw the ball at uh, Chismar. Coach, Brian Chismar. Chismar, Chismar hits him back. back. And we're off to the races. Quintus McDonald coming in there, number 92, Andre Collins. Austin objecting to being hung on to when he was out of bounds. Let's see what they're going to call. It looks like Penn State's going to get hit with the penalty on the play. Well, that often happens. But you, you saw Weston throw the ball at Chisma. The football will be at the 33-yard line. All this does is enable us to get another commercial break at the end of the game. It will start out at its 33-yard line. Four minutes, 26 seconds to play in the football game. It's 34-14. Penn State leads it by 20. Penn State putting out their defensive unit. And we've got a timeout. 426 to play the score Penn State 34 pit 14 will be back right after this the time is coming when a powerful business tool will separate the winners from the losers Jack good thing you call a tool known as the human voice we need to talk business the time is now and businesses with the strongest voice already depend on Bell of Pennsylvania 
for unsurpassed quality and unmatched value in regional toll calls. VIP volume discounts with lower rates for heavy callers. Watch service for heavier callers and even lower rates. And 800 toll free service to invite customer orders. Dial 1-800-D-CALL for Bell of Pennsylvania business calling services and give your company a stronger voice for today and times to come. On my way, honey. See you in about 11 seconds. Pennsylvania. It pays to call on someone you know. Well, hopefully covers have cooled down. 426 to play. Hit with a football. They're on 33 yard line. Out of the slot left. Sal Trill is the quarterback. Hayward and Gladden are in the running back. on the Gladys on and drop by Hayward. Well, Hayward has caught five passes in the first half for 80 yards and dropped a couple of key passes here in the second half. And I don't believe it's because he's hearing footsteps. He's just trying to run with the ball a little sooner to make some big yardage. Well, if I were 260 pounds, I wouldn't hear any footsteps at all. I'd make sure they heard mine. His footsteps are usually going on top of people. Okay, they find smaller footprints when the abominable snowman shows up. Ironhead Hayward is a big, big man and remarkable speed and agility for a guy that size. You know, a two out of five, eight yards, second down ten. Showing blitz, moving on the line of scrimmage. Gladman tries to make a move outside. He will not be able to do that as he has run out of bounds for a yard loss near the 32. Duffy Cobbs pushed him out of bounds. And if you're wondering why Gladman and Hayward remain in the game, Pitt just doesn't have any other running backs available. They just don't. I thought Penn State was offside on that particular play, but uh, they didn't call it. And they forced Gladman to the outside and out of bounds. The loss. Credited as a two-yard loss, it'll be third down and 12. Stopping the clock at 4, 14 to play. Blitz. Jamila, he's going to be sacked back at the 25-yard line. Matt Johnson records the sack. Johnson's first of the year. He's in there for the injured Mike Russo. Penn State now three sacks in the ball game, and that'll bring a fourth down in long yardage. Uh, you'll see the blitz coming up from the inside. You got Bobby White, then you got uh, Matt Johnson coming from his nose guard position, took a side, beat his man, made the sack. This football game was 17 to 7 at the half. We have exactly doubled that total on 34 14. 35 to play in the football game. We've got a timeout with the score. Penn State 34, hit 14. We'll be back right after this. Celebrate a century of excellence with over a decade of Penn State football on home video. TCS presents great moments in Penn State football. Narrated by coach Joe Paterno and former Nittany Lion Miami Dolphin Jimmy Cephalo. Volume 1 includes the years 1975 through 1978. Volume 2, 1979 through 1981. Volume 3, 1982 through 1984. Each volume is $34.95 or you can buy the complete set for $100. TCS also presents Penn State football 1985 year in review for only $39.95. And now you can relive all those great moments by collecting the entire three volume set plus 1985 year in review for just $135. To order, send a check or money order to TCS, P.O. Box 11300, Pittsburgh, PA 15238, or call 1-800-531-5314. MasterCard and Visa accepted. Add $2 per tape for shipping and handling. Pennsylvania residents add 6% sales tax. Please specify beta or VHS. Fiesta means party. Well, that's what Penn State is going to do tonight. And out in Tempe, Arizona, John Rasp all set to punt. Gets it away. Come taken at the 31 yard line by Coates. He gets off to the 40, 41 yard line. Jim Coates, the junior from Niles, Ohio. It's a 45 yard punt, the 10 yard return. And with 3.23 to play in the game, Penn State will take over. During our timeout, 
Shane Conlon came off the field. There was standing ovation playing his last game before the fans at Beaver Stadium. With apologies to the partner in preseason, Jack Cam and Greg Buttle and Denny Oncotts and Lance Mel and all those guys. Some feel Conlon's the best Penn State linebacker ever. I suppose it depends on your point of view. He's been a great one here at Penn State. Lance Lonergan is in the quarterback, 13 quarterback, and this is Sean Borowski, freshman fullback. And Borowski from the 39 gets out near the 43 for a gain of four yards. Steve Apke makes the tackle for Pitt. Well, Joe Paterno said of Shane Conlon, he didn't say he was the best. He said, but he's certainly in the class with the best. And the names that you mentioned are were pretty good linebackers. Second down and six, under three minutes to play in the football game. Penn State hoping to eat up the clock. Lonergan played some defense the spring ball that switched back to quarterback in the fall. Handoff inside to Manoa, who's out to the 47-yard line. Gadsen makes the tackle. Manoa's in the ball game because Steve Smith is hurt. DJ Doge is in the ball game also. And I think the reason why they want to give some of the seniors a chance to walk off. There goes Brian Cyberling, and here come. Dozier and Manoa playing their last game at Penn State before the home crowd. That's the reason they were in the game. And they were entitled to, to that ovation, and, and that's the way to do it. Clock running down, 2.10 to play. Troy Cromwell in motion, far side. Borowski driving forward, short of the first down. He's out to the 49-yard line. He had to get to the other foot. He's going to be short. He'll be fourth down in about a foot. For the first down. I'll never forget late in the kickoff classic in 1983 against Nebraska. And the game was obviously lost. DJ Dozier and Tim Manoa teamed up for the first time as the Penn State backfield. Well, and remember the name Jean Borowski because uh, you'll hear about him in the future. And this is the way uh, Joe Paterno has been able to keep the continuity of his, I wouldn't call it a dynasty, but of an excellent program done. Fourth down and a foot. Clock running under a minute and a half to play. Penn State will win its 22nd consecutive regular season game. And if the punt hit, then it will roll into the end zone. It's a 51-yard punt for John Bruno, and Pitt will take over on the touchback at their own 20-yard line with 1-12 to play in the football game. Pitt will end the season at 5-5-1, the same record they ended up with last year, but I don't think there's any doubt that some of the problems experienced by the Pitt Panthers have been eradicated and corrected by Mike Godfrey. The program is on the upswing despite the same record. And Pitt was basically a young team. Did come back strong in 1987, Mike Godfrey's second year as the head coach. Janilla to throw. Fires short, and the receiver makes the catch, but his knee was down, Hosea Hurd. The game is five to the 25, second down and five, under one minute to play in the game. Hosea Hurd, the freshman from Valdosta, Georgia. Stan, Mike Godfrey has always been a winner, no matter where he has coached, and I'm sure he's going to bring Pitt back to its, its heights again. Blue Osborne comes out, and a slot to the right. Gladman finds some running room across the 30 and he's out to the 33 34 yard line Charles Gladman picking up eight nine yards on the play more flags down the field. flag is down 32 seconds to play in the game Scott Goff inside linebacker made the stop for Penn State he's a type of a ball game the officials are glad to get over it <laughs> I think they had more practice in pulling a yellow flag today than they did most of the season personal foul against Pitt here we go again well, some dry cleaner is going to be very happy because those flags are going to need a thorough cleaning by the time this thing's over. You notice how they're all different, the uh, uh, degree of yellow. Some are larger, some are small. I didn't know that. I thought they had a uniform type of yellow flag. Their flags kind of match uh, your dress. <laughs> My color sometimes. <laughs> all right, further discussion. 32 seconds left. The penalty is marched off. Nullifying the game by Gladman, unless it was a dead ball foul. It was. So Gladman now 
has 88 yards rushing and 20 carries for the Pitt Panthers. Ball marked back at the 18. So Gladman gets the first down. The penalty on a dead ball is marked after the first down. It is first and 25 with 25 seconds to play in the football game. Is Gladman close to 100 yards rushing? 88. Players over the middle, got a man wide open up the 40-yard line. The pass complete to Chucky Scales. At the 40-yard line, short of the first down, so the clock, no, it stopped, but it should, uh, now Pitt's going to call a timeout with 11 seconds to play. They'll be facing a second down and four. Chucky Scales started his career at Pitt as a tailback, moved to wide receiver. He's from Pittsburgh, went to Shadyside Academy. That is his 20th catch of the season. Football game was 17 to 7 at the half, 34 to 14. Penn State allowing only its second first half touchdown of the season on the 80 yard drive by Pitt, and that was the first touchdown the defense actually allowed. The other first half touchdown given up by Penn State was on a block kick, so the defense has given up just 29 points in the first halves of all games this year. Second down and four, 11 seconds to play. Vanilla firing to the sideline. Man is open. Scales again. He's got a first down. He's run out of bounds. He's got three seconds to play. So there will be time for one more play in the football game. That was just a, a hook up on the sidelines, and it was a good throw by Janella. We, we heard he had a strong arm. If you give him the time, he, he can fire the ball. He led the nation among junior college quarterbacks last year out in California. He is from San Mateo, California. Junior, he'll have one more year of eligibility remaining. This should be the last play of the football game. Three seconds to play. Vanilla firing deep. This will be overthrown and out of bounds. And that will end the football game. The Penn State Nittany Lions for the second consecutive season are undefeated during the regular season with a mark of 11-0. They have won 22.